Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. Hello everybody out there in podcast land, whether you're doing the dishes, driving from home, getting some exercise, or just sitting there smoking pot. This is the Simpsons Index. We're here for you. I'm your host, Elliot J. O'Neill, and joining me tonight is BT Calloway. I like that we're there for them. <laughs> and Jordan Frost. How do you smoke a pot? <laughs> We'll have links on our Twitter page. <laughs> okay. And yes, thank you guys, and thank you all the listeners for joining us for The Simpsons Index, the podcast where we watch and review three episodes of The Simpsons at a time, but the catch is each episode comes from a different decade. And starting out tonight is an episode from the most recent season, season 29, episode one, The Surfsons. This was first released last month, and it was written by Brian Kelly. In this episode, it's like The Simpsons doing a Game of Thrones thing, and there's no context for it or anything. Not, they just... not even. It's, it's medieval <laughs> fantasy. There, there aren't yeah. goblins in Game of Thrones. Oh, isn't there? Mm. I wouldn't know. That's why I brought two Game of Thrones experts on the podcast <laughs> You can today. say nerds. It's okay. No, or no, geeks. no. I, I'm a geek for other things. Yeah, I just that's true. I just haven't geeked out on G O T yet. Yeah. But I, I know the acronym. It's one of those shows where I've it's the uh what's that fallacy? The the sunk cost fallacy where it's like I've just invested so much time that I just have to see how it ends now. You have to throw yeah. good, good money after bad. I don't, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people bitch about most recent season. I don't hate it. Oh, it's, it's not that, it's just that it's like if I started now, I'd probably be like, eh. Well, I mean, that's why I was wary of it, because, like, I normally don't go for, like, one-hour drama sort of shows, but, like, for whatever reason, Dexter sunk its claws into me. And that was such mm. a fucking disappointment that <laughs> when I saw the success of uh, Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead, I was like, no, I've been down this road before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, from, you know, all told, Walking Dead is still a constant disappointment, and Game of Thrones is, you know, divisive. Still but good. Still, yeah. Still good. Tackles some controversial themes while being pretty ordinary at the same time <laughs> so how was this as a game of thrones because they did start out with the music so. yeah well it was, it was a more a parody, parody of all kind of things fantasy so sure. there's, there's a lot of references to you know lord of the rings and dungeons and dragons get in there a little bit and yeah just, yeah yeah but they're not good references either they're kind of strange they're kind of taking a concept like a character model mm -hmm. or the name of a certain beast but then just yeah. making like adding attributes to it like the millhouse yeah. goblins just being all the same like almost like there's an unending line of them uh, holding a shared consciousness as well yeah, yeah which is very weird so it was just little things like that where it was taking elements but changing them like yeah the, that's the mo thing you can say about a lot of the references is they're just there they don't, they they're not funny they're not plots they're not jokes they're just appearances no there was like next to no soul in this episode like one of my big problems is that it it tries to go after a bunch of different things comments on science comments on religion comments on um uh i don't mm. know euthanasia i guess but and it's never the point no yeah. and the mm. morals that they've got around it are so half-baked and fucking high school level philosophy yeah. like i really hated the the line which from the wardrobe with, yeah, with aslan, aslan with the cross necklace i just i was reading my notes because it made me chuckle where it's i'd written in caps oh aslan oh <laughs> Like <laughs> played by Kevin Michael Richardson, and this was yeah just a fuck up of a misstep of a terrible. Yeah, I mean everyone knows that Lion Witch and Wardrobe is like a metaphor for Christianity, but it was just it's just so heavily shoved in your face, and it was just and yeah. his animation was really like different. Yeah, it wasn't, the animation wasn't was bad. weird. It was just it felt stylistically not like The Simpsons. I don't I don't know what it was exactly. He looked but... like the Paddle Pop Lion. Yeah, <laughs> starters. Well, yeah, he was sort of drawn slightly different. The eyes were a different shape, and also he had like exaggerated movements, like you'd see in a Disney cartoon. Yeah, yeah. like he did not move like a Simpsons mm, character. No. So for better or worse, BT, what joke stood out to you? Because I feel fairly mediocre at this episode, I'm actually going to crank up the anger just for the sake of keeping things interesting. Yes. So I'm going to quickly point out all the jokes I did like and then just sludge hatred on everything else. Cool. Uh, I do like that in the Simpsons house, they have literal corn hanging from their, from yes. their windows in like like the replacement for the corn curtains. Oh, right. It was yeah, like yeah. ears of corn on a rope. That was pretty cool. Yeah. When Millhouse Gremlin first shows up, he uses the bellows as like an inhaler. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's not bad. So there's a caricature of... George R. R. Martin walking around saying a sign that end is not nigh. I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, they accidentally summon an all-smelling nose instead of an all-seeing eye. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. And uh, in Mr. Burns office, there is a, and I like this because it's only a background feature. Actually, there's two. In the pub, there is a clear stand-in for Aragorn in his hood and long pipe sitting there. No attention is called to it. It's just there if you noticed it. 
And similarly, there is an owl bear in Mr. Burns' office where the normal bear is. Yeah. So yeah. a nice quick Dungeons & Dragons reference that I got a little insider chuckle on. There was a potion in the background, mm. just on the shelf, that said, Cures Moderate Wounds. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. It's potion like, of yeah. Cure Moderate Wounds. Yeah. <laughs> Final joke I actually quite liked is when they're rioting and they uh, break open the, the glass to the weapons store and they'll just pick yeah. up daggers of glass <laughs> yeah. instead wow. of the weapons. They just like hold it in their hands. Know, like, you're like, oh, you are going to get cut. All right, so that's all my uh, love purged from my body. Let's go for the rest of it, which we'll get into as we go. Um, yeah, for better or worse, what joke stood out to me? Um, the Smurfs joke was really weird to me. How it kept coming back. It came back three times, and each time it was less funny. Yeah, and it wasn't that funny to begin yeah, with. Yeah, diminishing no. returns on something that wasn't that great to begin with. Yeah, another but, reference: Smurfs. Like, is this when the, the Smurfs movie just come out or something? Was Smurfs no, like this back came, in the public This came out a month ago. Oh boy! Yeah. I think there was a recent Smurfs movie. There actually. was, but it, maybe it was like six to Even twelve then, months ago. That was a year ago. I'd like say. I don't know, sexually transmitted diseases and Smurfs, like genital Smurfs. That he called it, and I was like, mm, where was really? the laughter in this? You couldn't think of a better joke for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jordan. What story point stood out to you? They established that halfway through the episode that Lisa is magic, yeah. and then that's kind of forgotten about. So quickly and i feel like that could have been a more interesting episode if you'd introduced it a little bit earlier and then had something to do with like oh she is like a secret magic user i thought that would be maybe a bit more interesting to talk about than whatever it was that was saving marge's mum who didn't really want to be saved anyway and then they they just they drop it very quickly and then they kind of cut it even more by lisa just suddenly explaining oh no magic only exists because dragons exist Mm -hmm. and now you've killed the last one so magic's over everyone yeah it's very dull and this was time that was taken up by stupid smurfs jokes that could have you know had a bit more of lisa doing her magic and maybe trying to be secretive with it you know yeah like she could have been doing other stuff with it and it, it really only showed her doing essentially alchemy magic yeah it would have been a much more dramatic storyline to have gone with establish yeah. this wizarding order as being the uh, overlords mm. and uh she's the one who disrupts that that's fine i'm on board yeah with that. or instead of all these chats about feudalism and stuff like have it you know oh there's people with magic in our society oh lisa that's a fairy tale yeah. and lisa's like oh i've got a secret mm. um bt what do, what story points for you stood out uh the fact that none of them really stand out is what stands out it's just <laughs> mm. <laughs> It's it, it could have taken so many different branches and it didn't, and that's going to be my main problem with this one is, okay, it is a little weird to be in mythical feudal Simpsons with no explanation as to why, but you're, you're like, okay, fine, sure, we're doing this, why yeah. not? As long as I have a good time, I'm not going to care that this came in apro of nothing. But then it didn't have a reason to be there. Other yeah. than, hey guys, why don't we do a fantasy episode? Yeah, And it was just, they had nothing to build from that. So I agree, if you had push this whole society of wizards thing if we had focused more on marge's mom the fix i will give to this episode is instead of that entire last bit with the dragon cut back to real normal world simpsons yeah. have marge reading the children a story after they've come home after her mother's funeral yeah. and this is how she's dealing with it just saying grandma was just ready to go and she's trying to explain it to them through a story but in the emotional gut punch of that is going to be, no, she's just coming to terms with it herself. There's a better episode. Wow. I love it. Well, I mean, that ties into what stood out most about me is that there was a much more meaningful storyline about Marge's mum there that was not explored. Yeah, it was absolutely there to be had, and they just didn't. And we haven't seen Marge's mum for so long. No, Julie Kavner has stated that she doesn't do that voice anymore with The Simpsons, so the fact that she's broken that voice out of retirement means something to longtime Simpsons fans who know this fact hmm. and that would have been the perfect opportunity to do that story yeah, like, to, to, to like, farewell this her is, this is yeah. it this is the last one yeah it's a real shame as well because Marge's mother's death could have meant something rather than just this sort of stuff happening storyline that had yeah. felt hmm. like it had no stakes that even at the end when there's a Marge's mum is an ice wizard versus a dragon battle how am I not excited yeah like, is probably listening to the voice is good reason why she doesn't do it ever. And she uh, stated before, she it hurts her. Like I feel for her. She's like essentially, I feel like she's 
almost obligated to be doing The Simpsons, mm. and maybe she wants to just retire in peace. But yeah, I, yeah, it was very crackly and rusty, and even Marge's voice, I, I noticed in this voice, was yeah. very harsh. Yeah, the basic Marge voice has not been the same since like season twenty six or something. I yeah, want to say because yeah. it, that's got to be hard to maintain. Another reason why guys just just end it before like thirty yeah. and done, thirty and done. All right, so play count. How many times before today have you seen this episode? <laughs> uh, you know the answer to that already. <laughs> yeah, PT? Once. We saw it like two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. We watched it. I was like, maybe we should do this for the first season 29 episode we do. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm like, ah, fuck it. Let's just rip this Band-Aid off. Did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? I was trying to think of an episode where it's non-canon, mm-hmm. but it's not a Treehouse of Horror it's not in the established Simpsons timeline. They, they must have done it before, maybe, but I can't think of one. Um, well, it, it comes into this question of what actually is real on The Simpsons. And yeah. They definitely, after the principal and the pauper said, you know, this is a show that takes place and it resets every week universe. It doesn't yeah. matter. Continuity doesn't matter. I was thinking of like the 138th Spectacular. That's kind of one like that or the yeah. behind the laughter, but it's still kind of in the show. Whereas this was just mm. a cut to. There's no like... They're not... What if we live back in those times? Yeah. Yeah, those times. Yeah, those there's times. no current Simpsons reality to set it up. I was thinking of the Holidays of Future episodes um, okay, yep. where they do that, but also they do establish it in real world canon, but they've done a couple of episodes like set in about 20 years in the future now as well. Okay. Yeah, I suppose it's questionable if Lisa and Hugh is canon or if... Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, those were like fortune telling ones and like mm. same with Lisa as present in episodes, but those ones like they say, no, this was definitely in the future. Even in the past, they've had like, you know, these are the events that led up to The Simpsons, whereas this is like, are we to believe that, is it, yeah, like a parallel universe of The Simpsons? Yeah. Which makes it even shittier that they didn't set it up with any real no. world context mm. yeah. with like Marge's mother and that stuff, because it could have been a great parallel. But one of the main things that I will say it doesn't feel like a Simpsons is it honestly feels like a fan of medieval stuff just wrote as many references to yeah. medieval it, stuff. It, it exactly. feels like a uh, whiteboard humor again. Yeah. Where they just write every, all the ideas on a whiteboard and just tick them off one by one. I know, because there's like shitloads of background jokes and mm. there's so mm. much loving detail put into the animation of this episode, but the story is just such non-important garbage. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> Maybe it's not important at this stage. Maybe it's just there's this huge juggernaut and they throw a lot of money at it and maybe it still makes money. I don't know. Objection, it's always important. Yeah. <laughs> Story yeah. is always important. Well, maybe not to Fox. Nothing is important to Fox. Not even <laughs> money. They <laughs> to continue existing. Yeah. They just want to have the most of something. Yeah. So let's talk about the wackiness of this episode. Yeah. Yeah. On. So a million Goblin Millhouse is sharing a same conscious. Yeah. 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 Um, dying a lot too like getting maced right in the face multiple times and being pretty okay with it yeah like they actually say you're gonna run out of us not i'm eventually gonna die because you'll kill all of me yeah Yeah. and the thing i hate about that scene was it was so detached from anything it just popped Uh. into it popped out it was just nothing like, yeah just reminded me of that where they do the kind of the version of the prank call with the raven instead i actually like that, I like that joke I, I didn't mind the joke but then I was, lady to, parts. I was trying to figure out though when mo is listing the humors they cut back to bart and millhouse yep. and then laughing and i was like going was there any point to that well that's established in the other crank calls man that's like when Mo's doing his routine, why you little? I'm gonna come over there and turn it, and then they cut back to the kids and they're laughing at Mo's rage. That's, That's a, yeah. They're just importing it from the episodes and doing it here. Uh, in terms of wackiness, though, sorry to get back on point. Uh, Marge was an 11 year old child bride. Uh, well, it's that reference to that era when people did get married at that age because they only lived to 30. Yeah, so. yeah, it's still gross. Yeah, it's still gross. I'm not saying it's not. I'm didn't just need saying, to make that joke. Yeah, speaking of parts we flat out didn't need at all. There's that whole. Big it where Bart's like, well, what if after we die, there's nothing? There's no joke and there's no point in that yeah. entire conversation. Mm. They bring it back later for no real reason as well. But yeah, just... I wrote Death Chat 1 and 2 in here. And it just seems to be some, like, I don't know, holier-than-thou atheist just writing, religion's stupid. Why can't it just be nothing happens? Well, that, that was like all the other explanations of death. It's almost seemed like they were, yeah, they were making fun of... A whole bunch of religions. It didn't serve a purpose. There was no, no. punchline. There was no. This was not the plot of it. If, yeah. we, if it was tied to something, I wouldn't have minded so much. But it just it floats on its own and does nothing. 
yeah, this commentary about what happens after you die, mixed in with this episode that's also making like comments on feudalism and stuff. And yeah, hey, that was the other thing I wanted to bring up. The biggest driving plot here seems to be Homer loves feudalism because he defends it a bunch but then he has to overthrow feudalism it's like I don't yeah. he doesn't really care that much we don't really care that much why yeah. is this your driving force yeah yeah it's a bunch of stuff happening to people that don't care that much Marge's mum is just like yeah I'm cool I'll die and Marge is the only one that gives a shit. Yeah, yeah. Marge's mum couldn't have mentioned that earlier. <laughs> yeah, oh, and that was my problem with her, is that because she wasn't aware that Lisa could do magic, mm. she allowed her family to go poor buying her this amulet and then just had the goal to say, man, I don't want it. Yep. Well, to be fair, they didn't ask her. But to also be fair, she was in the room when they all got told, you're dying, and she was like, could have just gone, I've had a good run. Yeah. yeah, and see, that's another thing. They weren't setting up this story. They should have done that a lot earlier. They had time, man. <laughs> there was still time. <laughs> All right, how about the heart of this episode? Doesn't exist. It thinks it does. That's the worst part, yeah. but it doesn't. Yeah, the, the, the talk between, the, the two talks, rather, between Marge and her mum, when she convinces her to try and on the omelette and live for the first time, and then later when she's like, hey, this is really an appropriate time, but uh, I'm actually going to die now. Yeah. Um, I know you're hiding from a fearsome dragon. But I think that was their attempt at like, oh, you know, we're trying to reconcile and, you know, I'd want you to, to live on, mm. but... Her mum is like, oh, it's unhealthy, and, you know, I'm just a, you know... See, well, well, that's what I liked about the second one when she actually does go and walk into the dragon's mouth is that there was some emotional stake in there. She never established that she actually wanted to get healthier. Then when they gave her the amulet, she goes, whoa, 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 we didn't talk about that. Like, if she should have had a bit more emotional defiance? Well, I also, I think that first bit, even if you're on board there, it's completely undercut by, okay, so she gets the amulet and is like... Okay, for you, I'll keep living, sweetie. And there's like yeah. kind of a sweet moment there, but then the next thing she's like, ooh, well, I'm alive now. What are we going to do with all this time I have? Ooh, being alive is so good. Yeah. And like Marge is like, oh, but we can still talk. He's like, oh, let's talk. What are we going to talk about until I die eventually? God, you suck. Even worse, Marge is like, but now we've got time to talk about all this stuff. And she's like, all right, well, tell me. Tell me, what did you want to ask me? And Marge has nothing. And it's like, clearly, she hasn't really thought about it too much. Mm. Yeah. Kind of- and then it was just sort of, it felt like it was just set up so they could make that stupid fucking shapeshifter joke. Yeah, that was awful. I tried to change him, and then... And, 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 and. I, I, I dated a changeling once, and I thought he I could get him to not change. I can't even remember. Oh, it was God. stupid, and I rolled my eyes, and they bled. Doesn't uh, matter. Yeah, th- this oh. was... So- Sorry, I just saw in my notes a worse joke when brought up yet. Marge's twin brother. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Markery. He has too much heart for Marge. Played by Nikolai, Nikolai Costawaldo, who's the incest-loving brother from game of thrones is that uh, him that's him uh, he's in it so briefly and yeah. says no good lines i could i did not even know he, the the last line he says which is good things come to those who wait because that's when marge throws home around it's like you either get that amulet or don't bother coming back at all and he's just like i should have married my twin brother markery like yep. stupid ugh. awful gross it's just marge with a like slight five o'clock shadow Mm. Yeah, so it was kind of a funny character model for that reason, but because it's an incest joke, it's like, okay, what are you going to do with it? And then they didn't do much with it. Okay. Yeah. It was just, ooh, I love her. I'm going to commit incest. Oh, yeah. I'm just, I've just been waiting outside this yeah. entire time for this to happen. Yeah. And what makes it worse is like that credit sequence where they had the sketch drawings of all the characters. Mm. Like, the, the Hobbit credit sequence, yeah. Oh, is that what it's paying tribute pretty, to? Pretty sure, yeah. And yeah, the last frame of that sequence is Marge's brother Mm. and he's drawing Marge. And it's like, that's the joke you're leaving us on? Come on. Get it? Because he wants to fuck her. Yeah. That that whole credit sequence is completely pointless, though, to me. Do you get it? Do you get (laughs) it? Oh, that he wanted to. Oh, he wanted to fuck her. (laughs) I I thought he just wanted to bring her cake. Which credit sequence? The closing one? The the one with the paintings and the sad song over the top of it. Yeah, the sad Mm. song was very out of place. I I didn't get that. Strange. I didn't mind like the sketch art. Like it, it is from the Hobbit. Yep. I didn't mind that as a closing credit sequence because, you know, we get to see some cool art, the credits are playing, it's not mm. really an important part of the episode, but yes or no, would you watch this mm, episode again? Nope. The only reason would be to try to pick more references. Yeah. But yeah. That's not a reason. I, I'm not watching the show, I'm just watching the background. So that's, I don't want to watch the show again. Yeah, this isn't for fans of The Simpsons. This is for maybe fans of fantasy, but even then, like... What's in it for them? Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know. Is I only really have a passing interest in fantasy stuff. What do you guys think? Is does it hold anything? Any? Uh, no, like I said, because it kind of it, it breaks some established tropes. Like mm. the the white the White Walkers are famously yeah. don't talk, and like the gelatinous cube as well. Yeah, gelatinous um, cubes don't talk. And I know you love gelatinous cubes. Oh yeah, they're great for murdering your players. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, this one is just like I told the cat not to sit on me. And, yeah. and then when he eats homers, do you mind if I dissolve those? I, I did like the dissolving toenails joke. Yeah, I didn't mind him as a character, but it just felt so there. It, w- it was something off the whiteboard. Well, mm. yeah. And the other weird thing about Gelatinous Cube character is that he had the exact same voice as Duffman, who also appeared in this episode. It's, yeah. It's not something that, like, I am confused by this, but it is... It was the same with Kevin Michael Richardson yeah, being both Aslan like... and the wi- White Walker. Yeah, it was the yeah. same. BT, what would you change about this episode? Lots. I, ju- I would just tie it to a theme for starters and then tie that theme back to the Simpsons world proper. Yeah. It just feels so empty and directionless that it's just, even if you like the jokes, it's like just silk floating through the air. Just <laughs> <laughs> ribbons. Ribbons. Uh, f- it's fucking ribbons in the Elysian fields. There you go. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan, what would you like to change? I would change it so that the fantastical elements related to a real world plot mm. like yeah. uh yeah, you, i don't know use magicians to talk about the one percent or something yeah like it, it was about like homer is is downtrodden because you know he's he's working well i mean he doesn't work hard but the fact that yeah hey, he pushed that wheel yeah, real it's true. hard <laughs> but mr burns is talking about like ceo's outrageous bonuses and, and pay structures compared to the the working man who who you know breaks his back yeah. for them like and have it b- about like having the fantastical element to kind of like be able to make hyperbole about the real life situation um yeah. and have fun with it that way but this one was just a story which kind of borrowed from a lot of different things to make references because they're popular at the time mm. yeah. and really it amounted to nothing yeah it was a thing mm. yeah and look there's about three or four episodes here and i don't exactly have a problem with them going to this world like we've seen simpsons dip into mm. you know the treehouse of horrors yeah. the, no, the future episodes just tie it to something yeah at least give it a solid foundation because it felt like yeah we were hopping from just shaky platforms spilling mm. into lava sorry i've been playing a lot of mario odyssey <laughs> this week it's all good Guest stars for this episode, the aforementioned Kevin Michael Richardson and Nicolas Costa Waldo. Mm, whatever. You, everyone knows who he is. The old N- <laughs> NCW. And who's Billy Boyd? Billy Boyd was Pippin. Oh, there was another one, Hobbit. They had a Hobbit and they just like cook and eat Hobbits. Yeah. Okay. Apparently that's, cool. That's cool. Yeah. It was just boring and dumb. Mm. <laughs> uh, wasn't many musical moments of this episode. Oh, oh, though, uh, reference to music, though, this was the first episode without Alf Clawson. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And it I- seemed suspiciously quiet. Mm. Yeah, I did do my research. I didn't know when we covered 29 episode 2 whether or not he had anything to do with it. He didn't. Okay. I can confirm that. But the, the music wasn't necessarily bad or anything. No. It was just generic fantasy stuff. Yeah, I was about to say, you can't really tell because it's not Simpsons-y. Yeah. So you can't, you've got nothing to compare it to. But it was Bleeding Fingers Music was the composer. <laughs> Jordan, any other notes? Yeah, just a couple. That whole thing about with the people talking about... What happens after you die? Yeah. It was like, this is basically Pat Oswald's joke about cake. You know, oh, well, I think it's, you get baklava. And, oh, yeah. Fuck you. And then he, because he, he punches Otto when he mm-hmm. starts talking about like, oh, no, yeah. I think it's this. And I'm like, this is, yeah, this is basically Pat Oswald's joke. Uh, yeah. I did like, there was a background joke. <laughs> there was a store called David's Merkins. Oh, oh, yeah. For David Merkin. There were a few background stores that I liked. I liked the Coldstone Screamery, and they yeah. were torturing Hans Molman. Yeah. And there was an Apple Store one, and, a, you know, the Apple logo with the bite out of it, and they were just selling apples was- with bites taken out of it. <laughs> yep. Um, Again, artists working on The Simpsons, you guys doing the amazing background, work. Yeah. Um, a, a joke I didn't really like was, I, I don't know if it was supposed to be a reference, but um, Homer doing, like, the Larry David thing, like the pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty sharp. Yeah. It did seem very similar, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. It reminded me a lot of Larry David. Yeah. And I was like, is that a reference? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that made me sort of squint a bit too. But the thing I want to bring up here with the Pikes. Mm. Um, yeah. Troy McClure was on one of them. Yeah. yeah. It was definitely him. Like, it wasn't like a, a model that looked like him. Yeah. It was That's him. That's very distasteful. Yeah. It's... <sighs> 
I just don't know what, like, do you have to spell it out for them? Like, why that's bad? He was murdered. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, if his character died, that'd be one thing. But Absolutely. There's a difference between putting Marvin Munro's head up there yeah. and Troy McClure's, who was yeah. killed tragically. I was about to say, because the other ones up there were just, like, characters from the current Simpsons universe, like Agnes and Skinner and Maud and well, yeah, Ned. Well, yeah, Maud makes sense because she was killed in the Simpsons yeah. world. So then you're like, oh, okay, yeah. that's that. But the voice actor is fine. But the voice actor of Troy McClure, Phil Hartman, like 19 years ago, was murdered. Mm. And there is just no way yeah. it is tasteful to have his head on a fucking pie. No, you think this is actually a good tribute? <laughs> because, yeah. yeah. So for all the praise I was giving you before, art directors in this show. That one. Fire the intern that fucked that one. Up. Yeah. PT, yeah. any other notes about this episode? Uh, let me check. I do like the line, everyone is somebody's fetish. Yeah, I like it's that. It's kind of adorable. Yeah, I like because that. you know what? They are, and people should feel confident. You know, it's never because the, the line previously was, it's never too late to be a harlot. Yeah. 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 I liked it. That's the one thing I learned uh, last year when I got back onto the single market and hitting up Tinder. Oh, is anyone going to like me? It turns out there are so many beard fetishists out there. Ooh. And it's like, it's it's not my thing to like have my beard fetishized, but like, I, if she's into it, why not? But it does feel a bit weird when I'm on a date with someone and then they kiss me and then like their fingers are all up in my beard and I'm like, ha you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> or they're like, send me a photo. Like, here you go. No, just of your beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of dick pics, you start sending out beard pics. Yeah. Beard pics, yeah. <laughs> I'll just tease them the stash at first, and then Ooh. I'll get... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can play a game. Pube or beard. <laughs> I don't want to play that play game. That, that game. sounds awful. <laughs> anyway, um, BT, any other notes? Uh, oh, yeah. That, you pick up a stick, say a funny word. Yeah, that's not insulting at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was that's a pretty funny bad. joke. I didn't love it, but it was good enough to get a note. Um, no, yeah. I think I'm out. I think that's everything we wanted to talk I about. had a um, couple of anal corners, unless you... Uh... Jordan's you. Oh. How could? So, sorry, sorry. I just let you know. Every time I get to say a wizard did it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. The, this is the one time I'll allow it. All right. How did Marge's mum know that it was Homer? She recognizes his poking. Also, a wizard did it. And yep. yep. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> Second one. Marge cuts out homer out of his toenail prison in the most inefficient way she's just like clipping randomly i'm like why don't you just cut at the fucking base of the toenail then he's still in a cage you have to disassemble it as properly also wizard thank you and when marge's mum is in the web homer speaks first before he cuts it down so she could hear him also um, also wizard okay fair enough also they did say that you know in a week's time she'll be frozen solid so why was she able to just like be uh, like an ice person immediately and just like walk around they said frozen solid it's mm. true well when you think about it no that was stupid i hated that point as well yeah, yeah. it's like i oh, i was gonna die but i'm actually stronger now so yeah dumb. but she does go out like a badass but yeah no it's dumb it's stupid which Wizard is a shame. Uh, let's just briefly talk about that final sequence because I did like her walking into the thing, and there were a couple of other things I liked about that. Oh, sorry, were you out of anal corners then, or yeah, as much? Out of anal corners. <laughs> yeah, uh, there were a couple of things I liked, like when Nelson was attacking with bread loaves, and he just slices <laughs> a dude's head off and yeah. puts one through the chest. They've, they've done the occasional absurd fight scene, and this was yeah. one of those. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a big fan of like non-explosive objects crashing Being and then explosive, exploding. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and when the, uh, whoever it was lobbed the pig and like, I was like, yeah, Boom. well done. Yep, I like that. Yep. And I forgot to mention on that on the tree, House of Horror, is the baby pram that... Uh, Just cra- catches fire. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was good. But any other notes about that final battle? <sighs> the, yeah, the... um, There was no reason for McBain... Mm-hmm. for McBain to kind of be there and, and fighting them back in the first place. And also, it made it seem like he was the Lord, because it was like he... Fair, uh, well, they like established he, him as... Yeah, he was there in the very beginning when he yeah. rode to the house. They didn't say he was the Lord, he was just someone better than them. That's all we know. So they didn't establish it properly, but that's the best we've got of an establishing point. But then it was like, as soon as they defeat him, like, yay, like, you know, we yeah. won. But surely, mm-hmm. like, yeah. the Montgomery, as in Burns, is, yeah. is, is like the real... It, it, it didn't. I didn't understand why it, well, he was the final boss. I want to put it as in, okay, this is the big climactic showy finish of this episode. We've talked about it the least because it matters so little. Yeah, like it's, it's true. just this, 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 the end. 
Yeah. Well, That's... you do make me think. Where was the comeuppance for Mr. Burns at the end? Like, and. That's a shame because the Mr. Burns sequence was one of my favorites. Yeah, I do like he goes, well, you see, you're, you uh, create misery, which we grant up to a fine power when slaughtered by the very rich. Gives us tiny wings that do nothing. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty cute. Because that does seem like excellent pointless extravagance to have mm. in this far-fetched episode. Uh-huh. Why T- not? Tiny wings. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you're like, wow, that's so useless, I want them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really should have been uh, tied up more in that. All right, just some quick fire notes from me before we rank this thing. Come <laughs> No, no, no. Crossbow sounds. Oh, <laughs> yep. I liked Leech Organizer. That was a, <laughs> a pretty decent joke, organizing yep. your leeches by day. They were very big leeches. I would not want them to be bleeding me. They're, they're effective, though. Mm. Homer did a joke that I hate, which is what I call the brain damage joke. Yeah, which yeah is, the lead one. Yeah. For those that don't know, this is my term for when someone goes, oh, I just hit my head really hard. I hope I didn't... Duh, duh, duh. Yeah. And it's like uh, immediate brain damage. It's a stupid construct for a joke. Yeah, yep. a problem you haven't been having this entire time only manifests when you mention the problem. Yep. Yeah. And when Homer licks the lead rock and goes... And that was kind of funny. Uh, he licked the lead rock. Yeah, I, yeah, I, it I was liked a good him. reason for him to be having a lump of lead that Lisa could turn into gold. And I was like, oh, yeah, of course I've got my lump of lead. What am I going to leave the house without it? Yeah. But then uh, to change it to a lick of lead a day keeps the dough. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, it's just dumb and insulting. The only time that type of joke has been done well was Liz Lemon, where she's got a cold and she blows her nose and goes, oh my God, I think that's a part of my brain. I hope I didn't damage my blung. <laughs> or, uh,. Homer eating the Guatemala and sad new peppers. Oh, I hope brain did my damage. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, when Super Wizard Chalmers uh, leaves and, and uh, Apu goes, take a peasant, leave a peasant. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mind that. Is that Janie? Janie. Yeah. yeah, okay. Janie, Janie, Volfini. Her mom's a skank. <laughs> We've is. learned that in previous episodes. Really? <laughs> oh, and if you need something explained, God, look no further than Sideshow Mel, right? Mm. Oh, his bone is indestructible, we've learned. Yeah, oh, yeah. He true. turns to dust, well, but his, bus- his bone stays. Non-combustible, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Fire resistant. Yeah, true. It survives some other things, I feel like. <laughs> Dragon fire can't melt bone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God, Wizarding World Order confirmed. <laughs> I've been saying it for weeks, people. Burns did 9-11. <laughs> but yes, I want to say that Mel's appearance in this episode definitely dragged on. Uh, oh, no, they made that joke as well, and that was bad. Mm, don't, yep. don't do what Simpsons do. Lisa literally gets up on a soapbox to talk about science. I'm yeah. just going to leave that one there. I missed the symbolism. What did that mean? <laughs> um, comic book guy's little appearance. Interesting. He is critical of comic books in his little appearance. He's like, oh, all the plots are contrived and the women are sexualized. And, and I feel like it's very specifically anti-Game of Thrones as well. It's like, oh, it's all just poorly written drivel so we can have all this sex and violence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which feels a bit rich coming from an episode which, look, if it's not making a lot of overt references to Game of Thrones, it's definitely somewhat inspired by it. It feels, I don't know. It's definitely inspired mm. by it. Come on, they have a voice actor yeah. from it, the music yeah. from it. You know, one of the White Walkers, which yeah. is from Game of Thrones. That's what I was going to say. Like, it, the, the music itself, it was done pretty well, actually, the opening music, because it was still vaguely Simpsons and Game of thrones and Like, mm, it really yeah, mixed yeah. the themes well together. And I'm like, yeah, that was a pretty good pretty good mix. Yeah, I mean, production isn't the weak points for this episode. I think the music, was, there wasn't any standout moments for me. It was no. just serviceable. Yeah. There was another reference that we missed as well. Um, the ha- How to Train Your Dragon toothless mm. head was in, in, the in the bar as oh, well. Was it? Yeah. Oh, there we go. And then, yeah. All right. Well, it is time to rank this thing on the Simpsons Index. We rank using our six point scale, which starts down the bottom at failure. But maybe if the episode was meh, you just give it a participant. But if it's good, bronze, great, silver, excellent, gold. But if it's the best episode in the Simpsons canon, you give it cubic zirconia. Those are the episodes that are essential. That is not this one. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to, uh, me personally, what I'm going to rank this one. I'm giving it a, a participant. It could have been a failure, but honestly, there were enough good jokes. And like I said, the production was actually pretty great, but it's just such a nothing story. BT. Um, I When we finished the episode, I was sitting on like a Patissa bronze, but then I was like, I don't want to come back and watch this. Yeah. And I feel like I can't bronze anything I don't want to see again. Yeah. Um, I like. The, how they crafted the world, the background jokes, and a few of the main jokes as well. But yeah, the fact that this isn't, there's just nothing here. There's no interesting storyline when there really could have been. There's no 
uh, amusing uses of its set pieces. It's just yeah. it's just there. It's stuff that's there, so it is a participant from me. All right, and Jordan, round us off. Yeah, look, I'm in, I'm in agreement. The references themselves are just there. It, it's kind of H.T. Simpsons-esque, which is <laughs> kind of meta now that I think about it, mm. um, for them to just have things there because they exist in the real world yeah. and they're like yeah. they're like references to older Simpsons episodes where it's like, hey, you, you loved it then, you'll love it now. Um, yeah, just go, hey, hobbits. <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. They're, they're funny. <laughs> they actually just say the word hobbits at one stage and it's like, oh, we're going to cook and eat a bit again, which is thing. And also, there was no joke better than my favorite feudalism joke, which is feudalism, your count votes. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's a participant. It's it, but it wasn't bad enough that I hated it so much that I wanted to fail it. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, unanimous participant all around. This will be joining such episodes as the ones we all did for Teenage Wasteland. <laughs> the pr- oh, yeah. The President War Pearls and Pranks to Rap. Mm-hmm. It'll also be joining. There's something about marrying the girl code, the one where Lisa's a mm, coder. Yeah. <laughs> uh, My Fair Laddie and My Fair Lady. And yellow subterfuge, the submarine one. Yeah, yeah this is uh, wading in the purple waters of blandness. Yeah. I, I really feel like it belongs with the girl code in the sense that they both really could have been something better. Yeah. With just a little bit more of a push. They could have made a point yeah, as well, as, both as, of as them. That, it feels like the point was actually lying there and they just didn't pick it up. <laughs> hey, isn't that great? Look at that, lying on the floor Whose like that. point is this? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I am not going to touch it. Mum always said don't touch points where you don't know where they've been. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to go now to watch an episode from the teens era. We we're going to be watching the Kim Bassinger and Alec Baldwin it's starring Basinger. episode. A Bassinger? Basinger. Basinger. Bass singer. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> trying to remember her line from it when she corrects singer. it. <laughs> uh, we'll be watching When You Dish Upon a Star. We'll be back. Hey, this is one of the times when you can literally say we're going all the way back because this is one of two scenarios where you're actually going back 19 seasons. And we are back, and we just watched an episode from the Teens Era, which was called When You Dish Upon a Star. It was season 10, episode 5, released in November of 1998, written by Richard Appel. In this episode, Homer stumbles upon the house of Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger. (laughs) I actually wrote it down. It's actually pronounced as Basinger. That's how she says it herself. Alto, tenor, basing. <laughs> he stumbles upon their house and then becomes employed as their assistant, but they fire him when he tells other people in Springfield uh, they've got a holiday house in Springfield. Guys, what did you think? Yeah, not bad. Yeah. I feel like I actually I enjoyed it more than my brain knows I should have. <laughs> yeah. I've got very few notes on this one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's better in my memory. Yeah, I'm the same yeah. way. I was thinking like, yeah, gold at least. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe? I'm, yeah. I'm certainly nowhere near a gold. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't... Yeah, it won't come out from gold for me. I just I don't know which way I'm falling for the yeah. other ones. Because there's yeah. a lot of parts of this episode that I love and I found funny. And, you know, there's definitely a lot of quotable moments mm. that I've used throughout the years. But there is something about it watching the this critical eye that it feels a bit soulless mm. yeah there's not a lot of there's no real laugh out loud and there's not really a lot of yeah. heart and there's not really a lot of story but it never feels empty is kind of what i mean mm. when i'm like it doesn't feel like the last one where it's just stuff happened then another thing happened then thing yeah. happened it just i don't know what there is in this episode to really talk about there's just well yeah there was mm. at least a consistent story with a beginning middle and end yeah. like and there were like jokes that the callbacks and references mm. and yeah. I although having said that though I thought everything before Homer actually falling literally into their bed is kind of I don't know it's almost like a sketch show like just little bits of joke like yeah, specific- it was the Simpsons go to a lake yeah but yeah. I was thinking specifically about the a dad saying he wants to go higher and it cuts back to Homer just being underwater suddenly and like yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. but like yeah little bits like that where it was just like these kind of non sequitur jokes that were kind of reminded me of some like yeah like a 60s kind of comedy sketch well also they used the long intro in this episode and when I noticed that I'm like okay well this episode might have been running short and now that I look at it uh, there does feel like a lot of moments in this where they stretched out the time a bit. Yeah, yeah I mean, the very intro is the Yogi Bear dream. 
Oh, uh, love that bit. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a good bit, but it's just when you think back on it, it's like, yeah, this feels like it was there to put in extra time. You should, yeah. You could have just gone straight to the lake. You didn't need home and dreaming and then Bart and Lisa running in going, maybe you were going to say take, take us to the lake. They could have just been going to the lake. Yeah, yeah. true. But uh, yeah, if they're going to fill out the time with something, like I'm glad that they did like such a good loving tribute in this mm. one. The background looked amazing. Yeah, background looked exactly like Hanna Barbera and stuff. Yeah, and the characterizations, like I thought, were really good. And like even Ned Flanders had a little bit of a longer nose. There's just mm. little details like that peppered throughout that made it look like a loving tribute. Mm. Only to have Homer Yogi maul him. <laughs> oh, I was having such a nice dream. <laughs> yeah, I was wearing a suit and shirt, no pants. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Dad, whatever. <laughs> Typical dream of yours. I didn't like his line of, oh, I'll never get back to sleep. <sighs> However, I did love when he did go back to sleep. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> Miguel, gorilla for sale. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, Jordan, what's a joke that stood out from this episode to you? My favorite one is probably the when they're chasing Homer in the car. Um, yep. And they're like scrambling all over the thing, and there's a peppering of like pretty good jokes. Like they're talking to Ron Howard, and, can you drive? Not well. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll <laughs> give it a shot. And they go, guess it's up to me. And he just fails at just the, the cracking of his bones as he's like yeah. falling yeah. on the ground. Ron on the Howard, road. And especially Ron Howard with alcohol throughout this one. It's like, <laughs> yeah. why yeah. do you smell like lemongrass? It's vodka and lemongrass. I call it a lawnmower. You want one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Homer, we're out of vodka. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, Rod Howard was actually a really good sport in this one. And mm. before we move on, may as well just do the guest yeah. stars question now because so much it's, of the yeah. episode is this. Yeah, Ron Howard, Alex Baldwin, Kim Bassinger, all of themselves as major part in the plot and a little bit from Brian Grazer at the end. Yeah. Um, apparently, Ron Howard said this was one of his like proudest moments <laughs> oh, to yeah. do. Like It was a great honour to be on The Simpsons and something his kids would be like really happy about and stuff. So I'm like, mm, good on you, Ron Howard. You know, if his kids aren't happy enough with the Fantastopotamus, I don't know what else they want. <laughs> God. I, uh, I read somewhere that uh, when it was originally pitched, Bruce Springsteen was going to be the the celebrity and he declined it then they offered it to Bruce Willis and Demi Moore right. and they declined it and then they went to, to Alec and, and people Kim people crazy they could be yeah, on The Simpsons I know. exactly no, lots of celebrities have turned it down Pearl Jam uh, fuck I forgot what episode they were meant to be in but... I mean I understand but I'm also surprised like it's just it's still The Simpsons and getting yeah. officially Simpsons eyes it's pretty cool yeah so what did you guys think of their performance in this episode oh yeah that's good the, I mean, they're uh, the actors, actors yeah. so yeah. It's, yeah. Already, it's already their wheelhouse. I mean, th- you do always get those uh, like film actors versus voice actors. There's always like a little bit of hesitation with voice acting by film actors. Like they're kind yeah, of sure. they're not quite sure if what they're doing is is good. Well, it makes sense though because they're so used to putting their entire body into a performance yeah. and facial expressions and stuff, and now they just have to do it with voice. Yeah. So, so. I thought Alec Baldwin was probably the the best of the three. Kim Basinger was it was a little bit a uh, bad. Yeah, don't you? God, now I can't tell which way to, to pronounce it. Does she sing tenor? No, she <laughs> sings bass. bass. Yeah, you're saying bass singer, but you're yep. not putting that yeah. much emphasis on the word singer. Got it. Yeah. It's just bass singer. Um, I thought uh, her and, and Ron Howard were a little bit more of that kind of like a l- little bit awkward, but they were still they were still fine. Like it didn't detract from it. Not like a sports star coming I mean, coming in mm. and just being very yeah. wooden. Yeah, she was a little stilted, but not like distractingly so. No. I thought Brian Grazer was actually a little so so at the end there mm, though. Yeah, but. Also, I didn't think much of that scene. I thought it was just way too dragged out. Didn't really add to it, did it? The, the episode. I mean, it was funny that Ron Howard sold Homer's idea for the Talking Pie mm. time travel movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that Br- Brian Grazer wasn't in it if it was, you know, uh, have to make the hard decision between his friend or whatever. His best friend either lives or dies. There we go. <laughs> his best friend is a Talking Pie. Yeah, I but, like that moment, but it took a long time to get there. Was he basically pitching, like, a sequel to what's it uh, someone's choice Sophie's choice kind of <laughs> it's like whether he must son... make a heartbreaking decision which one of his children will live or die yeah yeah, yeah pretty Very much weird. anyway that's Sophie's fine. choice too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> still choosing <laughs> Now she has to choose between that and the mystery box. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so who's choice two, colon, 
Let me get a. No. Yeah, you have to get back and I would like uh, Sophie's choice too. I'll have the penne ara arabeata. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm just imagining the universe of Sophie's choice and now like every decision she makes. <laughs> 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 Every choice I make is a Sophie's choice, yeah, being the fact much. that I am Sophie. And therefore, <laughs> making choices. <Yeah. laughs> BT, what is a joke that stood out to you from this episode? I actually really like uh, Homer directing Kim's workout. He's like, oh, now yeah. lift and strain <laughs> and whip your back <laughs> and lock your knees. Hi, yeah. her extend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, jerk, you jerk your back. Yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> your my neck hurts, yes. <laughs> That's good. Push the limits. <laughs> yeah, I love that because... Of course, Homer doesn't know anything about yeah. exercise. Uh, I guess I kind of feel like that might have flown over. I haven't seen this episode in a very long time, but I feel like that might have flown over my head previously Yeah, when I wasn't really thinking about, no, you shouldn't do that, because exercise, yeah. what's that? It oh, just totally. sounds like he is you know, giving direction yeah. to an exercise, and then you listen to the actual words, and you're like, none of those are good for you. Stop. Stop, Homer. <laughs> yeah. The jokes that I'll just point out quickly are the act breaks, and this is tying into what I was saying before about it feeling a bit soulless, is the act breaks were really weak on this one, where the first one was Homer just staring at them going, how about pancakes? Big cheesy grin. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's what we're going out on? Oh yeah, that is a bad loop, yeah. And then the other act break where Homer's out at them and all the people are at their house and ho- and they kick Homer out of the house and he's walking, oh, it's just nobody, throw your stones. Yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> I just They come with two options, either praise celebrities or throw stones at nobodies. <laughs> There's no in-between for them. Yeah. It wasn't even, oh, it's Homer. It's just like, it's a nobody, hurt them. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, Most of the people that were at Moe's are there now yeah. and they're like wait who's that like <laughs> what <laughs> doesn't matter that they know him he's still a nobody and yeah the, the fact that they can make out that it's not anyone famous mm. yeah and you know this question is for you know better or worse what stood out to you and this episode is filled with a lot of funny moments for me it's just i am just feeling this certain emptiness after yeah, it like none of them will really laugh out loud moments i think yeah yeah more a lot of uh, this. Hmm. So, how about story points that stood out to you? What do you reckon, BT? What, what for better or worse, stood out to you from the story? There's not a lot of story, to be fair. I suppose maybe if we'd gotten a little bit more in the beginning of Homer not feeling that he ever gets any kind of attention, that might have had a bit more weight when he decides to betray yep. their trust to get attention. But yeah, that's really the only story point in this, and I don't feel particularly much about it. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm meant, to be, I'm meant to be all, like, more uh, angry and try to be more entertaining. <laughs> oh, ah, this one. Ah, <laughs> words that yeah. mean stuff. <laughs> oh, grr, yeah. Mm. What about you, Jordan? What um, from the story stood I, out I to think you? For me, it doesn't feel... Re- like, if you actually fell into some celebrity's house, they wouldn't let you stick around. I feel like the the whole thing about them keeping around to do him stuff was quite contrived. Well, they were running out of Oscar uh, polish. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> I get it. It's a ridiculous premise, but mm-hmm. well, I, it is. But I don't hate the way they got there. Like, I just think there's no real reason for them to really be friends. Like, he can be their gopher, but I don't really feel like they'd be friends. Cause they do they... go from you're an assistant to you're a friend very quickly with not a lot. Like, if they'd been shown being doing, a, like, a super great job. Yeah. But, I mean, also, this is The Simpsons, and, you know, Homer's got to be involved in some way. And, yeah, it's it's ridiculous that they'd befriend him so quickly. But I thought the material at least getting them to that point was good enough that... I personally didn't think much of it, especially when he did crash in yeah. and then like, he's so dazed and woozy and he just hits snooze on the alarm that's going on <laughs> and tries to go yeah. back to sleep. Yeah. I think I would I, I would have liked it a little bit more if he was starstruck and, and was like, oh, oh, oh I really want to like be, be you, yeah. nice to you because I, I, I want to get something out of it. Like, I want to be a friend with a celebrity. But then, like, even throw a montage in there of, like, them having, like, you know, good times and, like, them actually becoming friends, I think. Because yeah. they show at the end, uh, Kim pulls out the photo and it's like, oh, I, I like the way you used to tuck us in and, and yeah. kiss us on the forehead and stuff. Forehead? Yeah. I don't, no. Mm. Like, just show me a bit of them, like, why they would become attached to him and why they would feel guilty about throwing him out. Yeah. Oh, well, it's interesting because, like, I I think I did a good enough job, but, like, what I didn't like about how the story unfolded was when he does go and do chores for them, he is shown failing to get him the items at the Quickie Mart, and then we hard cut to 
him successfully giving them the yeah. items at the Quickie Mart. Yeah, it feels like that he needed to have an idea of where else to go. Yeah. Like, maybe you should go to an actual grocery store, Mr. Simpson. Or, yeah. you know, take these products and this label maker. Yeah, stand-ins. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That just sort of felt like a weird jarring thing to me. Yeah, it was, yeah. Play count. How many times before tonight have you seen this episode? Eight. Yeah, a couple. A few. A few. I've actually seen this a lot. Probably oh. 20 to 30. Like, It's not a lot for you. I know, but this is like <laughs> peak prime Foxtel okay. binging it out in the early aughts, uh, you know, instead of having a life in high school and stuff. Mm. So did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Yeah, I guess no one's off point. There's just there's not a lot of the Simpsons in this one, I suppose. There's no, mostly not just really. Homer and the celebrities. Yeah. Yeah, again, bringing it back to that opening lake scene, it's just, okay, obligatory other main cast members. Uh, although I do like when Homer returns and they're like, well, we were looking all over for you. Where have you been? He's like, oh, nowhere famous. So where's <laughs> that muffin? The Gersh Institute. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Gersh Agency got a lot of uh, shout outs in this episode for some <laughs> weird reason. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they were re- uh, representing. They represent a lot of people. Mm. Um, I didn't like Homer's joke of... Um, my big secret, I can't read. How'd you know the Gersh Agency? I recognize the logo. Yeah, that was weird, because he's canonically red. Yep. Yeah. The other canonical problem I was having at this is um, when he's in the bar talking about famous celebrities they've seen. Like, oh, who you, who have you seen? At this point, Homer's met a lot of celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> he's but, met Leonard Nimoy. He's met George Harrison. Oh, uh, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, especially uh, when he was an actual famous person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the, that Mo scene didn't bother me, like, within the self-containment. Oh, yeah. it's, sort it's, of... just, it's a lot like the reading joke outside of this episode. It doesn't yeah. work. Absolutely. I do like the idea that all the barflies were starstruck by Ken Ken Brockman. Yeah. Mr. Channel 6. (laughs) You don't get much bigger than that. You saw him when you were buying cotton pulse? The absorbent kind? You know it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that was all silly, playful fun to me. Yeah, feeling like an episode of The Simpsons. Yeah, it's mostly the Homer show. I guess mostly it's the integrity of the show that's sort of feeling a little off because this is very much into The Simpsons' late 90s, early aughts run where having lots of guest stars in an episode was a more common thing. Yeah, and I kind of feel like this might be a little lost with age, is that it might have felt like a bigger deal back when Kim Basinger was still... Sorry, Basinger was still in movies. <laughs> and Alec Baldwin was still in movies. Yeah, like in TV now. Yeah. Instead of being Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> and he does po- a great job of... But I don't know if he's still got it. Uh, he had a podcast called Here's the Thing, and I fucking hate that phrase just here's the thing i always picture someone presenting me with the the, thing the thing from fantastic four here's the thing (laughs) really not the thing from john carpenter's the thing oh that too (laughs) here's the thing i do not want it (laughs) (laughs) see let me make this point here's john carpenter's the thing (laughs) yeah i might start throwing that in that's kind of funny (laughs) just if you can hand them a dvd while you do it yeah yeah here's the thing That's awesome. Uh, but what about the wackiness of this episode? Uh, Homer's neck turns all the way around. Yep. Yeah. And Homer, your spine! <laughs> just whips and back. bulges weirdly. Mm. Yeah, it's not good for you. I do want to say there's a good little sign gag of uh, Lake Springfield, formerly Cesspool Hole, sorry, <laughs> formerly Cess Hole 17. A. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that um, was really clever. Homer eats a whole corn cob and recognizes pesticides by taste. Yeah, that was a bit of a long, drawn-out joke that I didn't need. Yeah, well, it just wasn't that great of a joke, and it did go on for a while. I I like the idea, but the delivery just took too long. Yeah. uh, I was just thinking about biting into the the core of the corn, and it was mm, making me, like, my teeth itch. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Especially uh, just freshly harvested raw corn. That would have been so hard. Yeah. Very crunchy. When you see a, oh, let's take the Simpsons shortcut, you're expecting more from the joke, but really it was just he ate some pesticide ridden corn. Hmm. Oh, and he almost ran into a tree. I liked that. Yeah. <laughs> tree? I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, I'll save our life. I'm uh, not stupid, Marge. <laughs> I do want to quickly, you know, um, there's a bit where they go, we had to leave LA because it was so phony. Why not go to Bethesda? You're not phony enough. Yeah. <laughs> People who live in Bethesda, are you phony enough? Do you feel a lack of phoniness in your life? Right in. <laughs> Yeah, so it was a pretty wacky episode. They had that big car chase at the end and falling out of the sky and, and you know, crushing out Crash- Baldwin and yeah, everyone and being, being fine. mostly fine. Actually, I will point out, uh, just on to your point that you made before about it feeling like a sketch show, those three instances when they had the boat and it was uh, Lisa's turn, Homer's first turn when he snapping turtles amassing and the and then- watermelons... 
and then when he's trying to go higher, like mm-hmm. there was a weird disconnect between all three of them yeah. where there wasn't a good solid transition. Yeah. You almost don't see it because it's like he's fine and then suddenly he's underwater and then, you yeah. know. He's soaring like a candy bar caught in an updraft. Yeah. Want to look down on the clouds with contempt. <laughs> and But yet there was good material around yeah. there and, mm. you know, him crashing a poo's castle. <laughs> oh, flying <Yeah>. fat man. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a pretty good Taj Mahal looking castle. Yeah, though. what you... a dick. Omar. How about the heart of this episode? The pie. <laughs> will it you, live you, will it die we just don't know yeah you, can't, uh, yeah you can't get rid of the pie man that is the heart the pie is the heart um yeah that's all though yeah, yeah. i didn't really get okay uh, my big recommendation for this is open with like a plant picnic at the lake instead of this like family trip thing that gets us there straight away and we can spend some more time maybe i don't know just something about homer not feeling like he's getting any recognition for what he does they'll be like Who's the plant safety inspector? He's like, me, guys. It's me. You know me. You know Homer. Yeah. I don't know. Something that, so it has a bit more emotional weight when he feels accepted by them and then maybe a reason why he betrays them. Because although I do really like the joke where uh, he's about to tell the guys at the bar and it's, you know, Kim comes up in his thought bubble. He's like, please keep our secret. And Alec comes up and he's like, you've got to keep our secret, Homer. And then it's just some guy's like, just tell them. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you? What do you care? I'm telling you what you want to hear. And Ron Howard, once again, oh, we're out of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, who, who was that in his thought bubble? Just quickly. I, I don't think okay. it matters. They were trying to go with heart, heart, though, with Homer betraying the celebrities. and But I did not feel it. <sighs> I almost felt it. I think I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I feel like I'm at an eye exam and I can't decide between number one or two. Search yeah. your feelings. <laughs> I feel, uh, I don't know, Homer was just like instantly a jerk. Mm. So I didn't feel like sorry for him, really. No, nah, because he immediately goes from, oh, I betrayed them. I'm kind of the, wait a second. No, they just dumped me immediately, even though I betrayed them. Yeah, oh. that dinner scene was really clunky, actually. Mm. Mm. As well from a production standpoint, like, for some reason, Homer's burger was like a bit more detailed with color and everyone else's was just a flat dirt poo brown. Like, mm. it's just, you notice these weird things in this scene, which actually didn't have a lot of momentum and felt kind of exposition-y for, it was just made for Homer to go from the turn of feeling bad to feeling like they owed him something. Yeah, and, and to immediately go from, oh, you know, they don't preach to the man, oh, I've got their stuff, I'm going to be, yeah. like, you know, a and jerk. Was, about yeah, it. and he was also being a jerk to his family in this scene. Yeah, oh, you're yeah. not exactly John and Joan Cusack. And- oh, yeah, and really harsh to Marge was like, you can't open a film or, yeah. or whatever. I was like, hey, this is the woman who puts up with all your shit and does all your laundry and cooking and raises your kids basically on her own. Yeah, so you but can just she shut can't the fuck open up. a film. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, get yourself a woman who can do both. <laughs> so yeah, you don't actually feel for Homer, which sort of undercuts the heart. Like, mm. he is just being a sullen jerk. Indeed he is. Not a jerk ass, just kind of a jerk. And especially when they spend so long of the celebrities coming around on him. You know what? We were too hard. Yeah. Mm. And, and they spend ages on that scene as well. Although I do like the turn of, oh, we're going to make friends and let's get him. Yeah. <laughs> especially when he's like, Ooh, I'm Kim Basing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I'm too born to take Homer to the Oscars. <laughs> there is something funny about just the Museum of Hollywood jerks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want to set that up? Oh man, this episode's getting tough to rank in my head. Yeah. But BT, really, I'm, I'm getting a little settled actually. But BT, would you watch it again though? Yeah, I guess. But I feel like I'm not going to get anything out of it. That's why I hesitate. There's nothing here yeah. that I want to avoid. But I just I feel like this is I've got everything I'm going to draw from this. There's no so if it's on and I'm already seated and I have a nice cold drink or a nice hot drink, yeah, or a nice mediocre drink. Um, yeah, I'll stick around, but I mean, if I have something else to do and I'm not going to be excited and park my ass if I suddenly see that it's on, Sure, Uh, my uh, ass is going to keep moving. (laughs) Oh shit, I meant to put a a load of washing on and... Yeah, exactly. Do you echo those sentiments? I do. It's fine. It's, it's, it's background and you can be like, oh yeah, wait, 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 this bit's good. But yeah, it's not like a thrill ride. It's Mm. not uh, emotionally taxing. It's... It's there. It's it's not bad. It's not good. Yeah. I, I'd actually say that I would watch it again, but this would definitely be in a playlist sort of like right in the end middle sort of area. Yeah. Yeah. Like very deep into the marathon where you can just sort of, okay, I'm going to zone out or maybe have a light nap through this episode. Mm. It's Yeah, it's not essential watching, that's for sure. But what playlist would you put it in? 
celebrities playing themselves yeah. is the one. Yeah. In fact, the the playlist that you just described of the one that you'd put it in where it's like, yeah, I can watch it or I don't need to. Yeah. It's that playlist. The yeah. laundry list. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ron Howard appearances. Yeah, yeah. He comes I mean, up a couple of times. Uh, Simpsons family outings. Yeah. Uh, Simpsons drive through a cornfield. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, Bart on the road. Yeah, actually, any with a Simpsons shortcut. Yeah. <laughs> they go to the lake. Uh, destroy- Honestly, that's it. I think we've covered everything. Yeah, totally. Uh, what would you change about this episode, BT? Uh, like I said, just give us a bit more weight to Homer's story or yeah, something to really attach to because... It just kind of happens, and there's fat you could cut here to make time for that. I mean, the Yogi Bear intro is good, but it's not so important that if you had something more story-worthy to put in there that you wouldn't replace it. I do like that it establishes that it's 4 a.m., though, for mm. you know them to get caught in traffic and Bart to go, yeah. we wouldn't be in this mess if we lived left at 4 a.m. like I wanted to, mm. which I think was like Bart's one of two lines in his this episode. Yeah, he ain't got a lot. Jordan, what would you change? I think I would change the personalities of the actors like Kim and and Alec because they were kind of playing themselves and they were kind of playing... Very neutral. Yeah. They had a few jokes that were kind of at their expense where it was like, if we were ever in a bad movie, you know, you wouldn't talk to, you know, if we were... And they kind of look at each other. When you win an Oscar, you can take care of it however you want. Yeah, they kind of play them as a little bit stuck up, but it was always like they were making joke that they're not bad actors um, I don't know. I'd give them a bit more, like something wacky, or give them a reason to be hiding or something, yeah. rather than just the you know the curse of celebrity. It was just yeah. they were very nothing characters. So yeah, I I changed their their story a little bit. All right. What I'd do is I'd make Homer less of a jerk, and yeah. I'd make it that he got accidentally found out. Maybe Mo, you know, he's a bit of a stalker character. Maybe he's like he just cottons on to it because or even he just blurts it out by accident like sort of like uh marge if this doesn't get your murder running my name isn't homer j simpson (laughs) or he's or he's caught in like the background like of some paparazzi or they they establish that he talks in his sleep so he like he mentions it while he's asleep at his desk at work or something you know well tying it back into work you know uh he could Smithers, there we go. Smithers confronts Homer. Hey, why are you late for work again? And he's like, "Oh, sorry, I was just helping Kim Basinger something something." Oh, no, and- why do you have Oscar polish? <laughs> yeah. What smells like Kim Basinger? <laughs> so there are many ways that you could tie it back a bit more because it did sort of feel like things happened because there wasn't a lot of strong tying in this episode. No musical moments from this episode. They ended with a little bit of a happy day sting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That kind of went down okay. When he's yes. holding two bags full of money, yeah, those are happy days. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, that Brian Grazer just re- has a couple of bags of producer cash ready to go. Yeah, that's how producers work. Jordan, any other notes? I was like, that's what RC Cola stands for in the middle of the episode. <laughs> Royal Crown. Um, poop- Is that the same as the RC Cola we get here? Pretty sure. It's yeah. the same logo. So that's like a joke that they're actually yeah. drinking pretty pov soda. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But it's called uh, Royal uh, uh, Crown, so Homer uh, thinks it's expensive. It's Royal Crown. I think you'll find it's the finest soda available. <laughs> it's slightly worse than LA Ice. Oh, mm. L.A. Ice. I like L.A. Ice, Maxie. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I, I had to laugh as well when it's like Marge is like cleaning out Homer's pants and she's like, a cell phone? I'm like, that's not a cell phone. <laughs> Last week's variety. <laughs> so that was a good way for suspicion to build up. Yeah, wow. A thing that they dropped, but it was good for that joke where Homer answers the phone and he goes, imagine pictures, uh, it's a division of Homer, co. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, make that Marge discovers the secret and then accidentally gossips to someone. Ah. Ooh. That feel, and then, you know, Homer yeah. gets blamed for it. It wasn't really his fault. Yeah, there's something else to mind there. Or Marge thinks Homer's having an affair. Yeah. Because he's got to keep this secret. Yeah. She follows him with a camera, takes some photos, gets them developed. Yeah, someone nice. at the photo thing sees Basinger and shit and paparazzo. Boom. Fucking writes itself. Mm-hmm. Take that, Richard Apple. Yeah. <laughs> Appel. 
I like his buff as hell in this <laughs> as well. I think he directed them, like, give me a few more, like, biceps. <laughs> yeah, it's actually funny seeing, like, because Kim Basinger basically looks the same. She's an amazing, beautiful woman. And same with Ron Howard, you know. I think he's, he's an amazing, beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still wearing the same baseball cap that yeah. he was wearing in this episode. <laughs> yeah. But Alec Baldwin, wow. Uh, like, he even sounds like his voice has dropped, like, yeah. three octaves from this episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was very young, wasn't it? In this, it was, yeah, like, very... it was like, oh, he hasn't got that bass that he usually has now mm. but yeah. uh still his, still very him his barrel chest hadn't quite come in yet no <laughs> that it comes with age yes as does this salt and pepper hair <laughs> the piercing blue eyes of a yeah. siberian <laughs> oh my god your eyes what happened to your eyes <laughs> give me that no it's my only copy <laughs> <laughs> bt any other notes uh, I do like the kind of every now and then Homer throws to Ron, and I oh, kind of yeah. like that. Is like, well, I guess where I'm not wanted here. Come on, Ron. Yeah, <laughs> tries to just rope him into <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, he does that a couple head. of times, yeah. Yeah. and it, I just I like that kind of bit. It's good for the, the Ron Howard character. It's good for Homer. It's it's, it's a good chuckle. Yeah, especially because Ron Howard is kind of a bit shoehorned into this episode. The way yeah, like, that kind of uh, yeah hangs a hat on the shoehorning, but it makes it worthwhile. <laughs> That is a really good image. <laughs> a hat resting on a shoehorn. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I'm trying to figure out where Homer is going to survive now. He's got to be 500 miles from any celebrity in the world. I'm like, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, I guess. It depends what's classed as a celebrity. And you can't be in the Pacific yeah. Ocean because James Cameron might show up. Oh, that's true. Who's that? Who's him? James Cameron. <laughs> Have or you guys a- seen that episode of South Park? Yeah. Raising the bar. Oh, it's so good. Um... <laughs> Just referencing that courtroom scene at the end, I've got to say, Homer's speech is an amazing That's bit of true. satire. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, Celebrities yeah. have to learn that they belong to all of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's just the perfect entitled fucking ranting yeah, yeah. ravings of an idiot. They didn't want us to stalk them. They shouldn't have tried to ent- express themselves creatively. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and rifle through their garbage and every... And I like, small detail, all the family have their... Uh, yeah, face palming. Yeah, except Bart, who's like, go, Dad, go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that both sides of the courtroom are both like, oh, my God. Yeah. What is he going on about? <laughs> And it was an amazing scene. I wish that was the one that the episode closed out on, not the Ron Howard, Brian Grazer thing. No. I don't mind the Ron Howard, Brian Grazer thing, but fine. Maybe actually if it was cut into the credits. like Yeah, I think I think that's what I remember even now, having yeah. just seen it. I think I remember it being an over credits bit. Yeah. Or under credits. But I, I don't think they did because this episode was obviously running a bit short. Like, yeah. We haven't mentioned one of Homer's great quotes is, yeah, hurry, Mudge, the snapping turtles are massing. Yeah. <laughs> it's so long, uh, fishies. It's silly, but I love that. As yeah. well as the the interaction with the boat safety hire guy. <laughs> you have read the manual, have you? Oh, yeah, couldn't put it down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hand me a six-pack. <laughs> you can't operate a boat while under the influence. Sounds like a wager. <laughs> That was that was a good bit of banter. Mm-hmm. I actually, and then the bit after it was like, okay, you know, life jackets on. Yep. And he goes, and we're off, and she's out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, Anyone who's been water skiing knows us exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, uh, I I did read a fact about this one where the chalkboard gag is uh, my email address is not but dot but in original screening it did say but dot com but they had to like change it because but dot com was a real website <laughs> <laughs> of butts. I'm guessing it wasn't a family friendly website no Googling put it on private mode it? first yeah what do i care who's looking at this <laughs> the government yeah oh, they know i look at butts <laughs> who doesn't we've got the latest data on benjamin callaway <laughs> well he likes big butts <laughs> that means he t- can't lie <laughs> <laughs> i uh, just cannot lie but.com it was right. b-u-t-t yeah it's porn Okay. Just, just straight the fuck out. Is it all anal? It no, should be anal. No, no, we got a fair variety here. Uh, whatever. Kind of disappointed, butt.com. Yeah. You, uh, you could have just been pictures of butts. Yeah. Some quick fire notes before we rank this thing. Oh, making promises. That's what makes me a good father. Well, keeping promises would make you a good father. That would make me an amazing father. Yeah. <laughs> like that bit. Uh, it's a little jerk ass, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's not actually. It's terrible. Homer, you terrible father. <laughs> when they are driving to the lake and they take the shortcut, that's mm-hmm. when they establish, oh, who lives at that house? So it was setting it up, but not much. <laughs> no, it was drawing attention to it, but you had no sense that, oh, we'll be here later. Yeah. Because he was like, uh, this far out, it's got to be hillbillies. Yeah. <laughs> so you got a joke out of it and that kind of... Oh, yeah, the rich hillbillies. And, yeah. <laughs> what, is that a hillbilly, hillbilly hot jacuzzi? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's where they wash their fiddles? 
<laughs> Something oh, like that. Vit- vittles. Vittles. What's that? It's a food, like, but it's an old timey word. Oh, okay. V I T T L E S. Oh, I thought they were talking about fiddles, like, you know, devil went down to Georgia. That would work too. Mm-hmm. I assume that's what hillbillies are doing. Practic- hillbillies and fiddles. Practicing for a contest with the devil. Oh, yeah, someone's got her. <laughs> there was a good joke about Homer going. Oh, sure, you could need an assistant. Look, I, I noticed there's a broken skylight in your room. Yeah. And they cut it off there. They didn't go, Homer, that was you. They didn't do that. Yeah. Thank yeah. God. I don't remember that. Like, they didn't do any of that. Just quick. Yep. I like <laughs> downgrading the jokes. Like, this yeah. is how New Simpsons do it. And this is why it sucks. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Uh, Homer's movie. Do you guys remember what, what it was called? Um, oh, no. What was the title? That's what I'm asking. Oh. Oh, I thought you were about to, like, quiz us. Yeah, yeah. yeah he is. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. Uh, it was um, Titan Time. It what? was the Terminizer. 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 I was going to say, it didn't have anything to do with time. I would have. Yeah. Terminizer. Homer has a great thing that stuck with me, and I don't know who the fuck he's talking about, but I'll tell you what Ray Bulger's doing. Ray Bulger is looking out for Ray Bulger. I do like that. Uh, you know when it comes to mow the lawn where is Barbara Streisand yeah Yeah, that rant was good as well like even though I thought it was weird in the Museum of Hollywood jerks that Krusty was there but I guess he's only like a pseudo celebrity he's low level he's not even Mr. Channel 6 come on yeah Yeah. Ray Bulger was the uh, was the scarecrow in um, Wizard of Oz oh Oh. that guy I mean, Kim Basinger's line of, I miss Homer. He always had such interesting odors. <laughs> yeah. That was great. And again, undercutting the brilliance of Homer's courtroom rant was his, oh, well, I still have my crank calls. Hey, woman from Titanic, you suck. Yeah, I did was... like all he said, though, was, you suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit of Homer giggling like he just heard the word tit now. This isn't too bad. <laughs> well, it is time to rank this thing. Jordan, kick us off. Uh, okay. Um... The more we've talked about it, the more I feel like I'm I'm talking myself down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um but I don't I don't actually think it's worthy of being like a participant or anything. Um it's just whether it's like bronze or silver, I think, for me. Bronze good, <laughs> silver great. Yeah. I am surprised that I think I'm gonna say bronze. I'm surprised at myself. I, I'm going to think about it and go, in, again, like I said, in my memory, it's a pretty good episode. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah I kind of like this episode. Yeah. But in reality, it's there's nothing really to write home about. Like, it exists, mm-hmm. and it's got a few good lines, but it's, it's pretty nothing, really. Yeah, I am going to agree with you. It's bronze. I think I started out this conversation at a silver, but the more we talk about it, the more it becomes clear that this is actually reminding me a lot of the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp episode, where mm. this is an episode that's loaded with guest stars, kind of making fun of the fact that they're rolling out the guest stars. You know, I love when Homer, like, reintroduces himself when Ron Howard arrives. <laughs> yeah. He goes, oh, Ron Howard? Hey, I'm here to see Alec and uh, Kim Basinger. <gasps> Alec Baldwin! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I like how they're poking fun at it, but ultimately there is a bit of soullessness to it, and mm. not soulless enough that it feels participant-y, but like giving it a silver just seems like a lot of praise, and that's not what I really give silver. So bronze for me. What do you think, BT? I'm actually on the same page as everyone else. When we left, uh, left the couch, I was like, yeah, Brilva, maybe, and then yeah. I'll see where we, you know, and then, but I remember this, I remember liking this one a lot more, but just watching it now critically, yeah, there's just... It's not a strong story, there's not a strong heart, and there's not a lot of great jokes. It doesn't, I don't think it's bad, it doesn't commit any particular sin, it's just a little empty, and I'm surprised that I remember it as fondly. To me, this is a lot like the uh, Mel Gibson episode, Mm. where I remember it being a lot more fun than it was, and then I'm watching, I'm like, ah, this is actually fairly flat, so yeah, I'm on a, I was skirting Patissa Bronze for a while, but I don't think it commits any sin worthy of being dragged down. So I think it's fine as a bronze. No, I think I still mostly define it as being a good episode. But as a unanimous bronze, it'll be joining other episodes like The Lastest Gun in the West, Smoke on the Daughter, Gone Maggie Gone, Chief of Hearts, The Great Sempsina, which we reviewed a couple of weeks ago, a covercraft where Homer's a bass player. Yeah, this seems, that seems right. Because yeah. mm, those are all ones that maybe have some bigger flaws, but something like Graves and Cena does actually have a plot line. It's got some yeah. heart. It's a bit of a mess, but it's got ticks in the boxes this one doesn't have, and this one has 
ticks and boxes that one doesn't have. Yeah. Blend them together. He might have a good episode. <laughs> one where Homer meets celebrities and... Yeah. It's like wheatgrass and vodka. Separately, they're nothing. <laughs> together, they're a lawnmower. Yeah. yeah. I'll have one of those right now. <laughs> all right. And that will do it for the teens era for tonight. And now we are going all the way back to the classic era. And we are doing season five's Homer and Apu. Ah, Ooh. nice. I'm looking forward to this AKA, one. who needs the quickie mart? Hi. Hi. Good harmonics. And we are back, and we just watched Season 5, Episode 13, Homer and Apu. This was first released in February of 1994, and it was written by Greg Daniels. Greg Daniels? The Greg Daniels. The Greg Daniels. Uh, Yeah, Greg Daniels uh, started up the US office, was a big executive producer on that. He was definitely an EP on King of the Hill. Anyway, go check him out on the Wikipedia people. And in this episode... Apu sells Homer some rancid meat and after sort of dobbing him into the authorities, getting him caught on candid camera, Apu loses his job at the Quickie Mart, but to make reparations, starts living with the Simpsons family and doing chores for them and eventually tries to get his job back at the Quickie Mart. Guys, what did you think? Apu living with the Simpsons? It It happened. happened. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Great. Really great. Makes me sad that they don't have like a really fun punny title for it. It's just Homer and Apu. Yeah. Um... Yeah, this is a fantastic episode, I I thought. And, you know, in a few weeks, uh, I'm pretty sure the documentary's out now, the Mm. uh, look into sort of the offensiveness of uh, Apu, the character on The Simpsons. Yeah. Even though he gets caught up with scandal, I thought it was an important point that they made. It was, I was just following procedure. Like, Mm. (laughs) I was just following the Quickie Mark guidelines. (laughs) Yep. The the thing is, yeah, he's, he's a great employee for their company because, you know, they have all these... Yeah. Very poor hygiene standards and everything yeah. else. And he loves his job. Like they're talking about, like he works 96 hours straight because mm. he probably, he had to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's taken bullets before. Repeatedly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like he's a great employee and anyone would be like happy to have him. But I think it's, it's the, those convenience store stereotypes of the 90s as well, like, you know, showing through. But yeah, yeah I mean, yes, it's it's an offensive accent and everything and, and thing to do now. But like, I mean, they're not, denigrating him for it i don't feel in no, this I episode think, i think um speaking as three white guys yeah um <laughs> i think that apu is actually kind of represented as being what's the right word for this kind of the problem when you migrate to, to another country and you feel like you don't get a fair start there because we yeah. learned from previous episodes apu is a really smart guy he's got like yeah. a degree in computer science he's definitely smarter than homer because when he's doing his citizenship test he knows everything and homer is like read my fourth grade notes on history Despite all that, you know, he's a convenience store clerk. And I guess in this episode, you don't get the sense he's a convenience store clerk because he has to be because that's the only job he can get. It's just he loves it. Yeah, Yeah. and he's good at it. And it's sort of the same thing like how they have Ron Swanson working for local government and he gets so far up because he can maintain fiscal responsibility. Because he hates the government. He hates government spending, yeah. (laughs) So, again, uh, like you said, three white guys. It's probably not for us to say whether or not, but... I'm going to say maybe from here on out we should just not... Like, if we omit uh, was this racist bit, it's because we just don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Yeah. And, you know, just to be fair, I think we'll just try not to lean into the accent too yeah. hard either. <laughs> so, BT, what, for better or worse, was a joke that stood out to you from this episode? Man, this one is packed. I just, even before the first ad break, I think I was halfway through my page of just line, and then anything I, anything I like, put an up arrow next to it. It's nothing yep. but up arrows. <laughs> yep. Early favourite is... Lisa, the dog is barking. Yeah. Oh, the... arr, 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 arr. <laughs> Brought to you by... Arr, 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 arr. And now a message from the Church of Latter-day Saints. Arr, Latter-day arr, Saints. Arr, arr. <laughs> Just an excellent so choice of... It's also hard to bark while you're laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just such a funny bit. And it was one of these things where they were able to afford themselves like a static shot of yeah. Homer and Lisa just on the couch <laughs> and just watching. And uh, but, but not, like, impassively watching. Like, they know this is this happens all the time. There's always the dog barking every single word yeah. one yeah. at a time. <laughs> like, they're so used to it, they're just like, oh, yeah. I wonder what it's going to say. Uh, yeah, they're good. Sorry, <laughs> another early joke I really like, and I will slip into the accent. This is, fool, you cannot hurt a Twinkie! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> silly customer. Yeah, so good. We don't uh, actually get them in Australia, guys. Have you ever tried a Twinkie before? Yeah, Pretty sure I have. 
they're okay. They're fine. They're very sweet and sugary. I do enjoy their uh, their cult following of the theory they'll survive a nuclear explosion. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And in like zombie land, they're like one of the last things left. Oh, that's right. And and they did that in Family Guy as well. And that's one mm. of the episodes that I've really liked of theirs. Yeah, I tried a Twinkie. It must have been when I went to America the year before mm. we went because, yeah, I had them and they were fucking disgusting. And I was stoned out of my mind <laughs> when I ate it. And if I wasn't ready to tolerate it then, man, I don't know when I will. The, the cream is just so sickly, sweet, fake whipped cream. And you're like, oh... I can just tell this is basically a lump of sugar. Mm. Yeah. Oh, not... it's just a preservative. Yeah. That's got a, a, you know, a, a coating of preservative. That's but why I you would, can't harm it. But yeah. I would, yeah, I would believe that they could, <laughs> you could twist them up and they would like, and like reform back yeah. into yeah. their original packaging. Fun that's fact, it's real. what they uh, make the first prototypes of the T-1000 out of. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. That's what the T stands for. <laughs> Twinkie 1000. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this makes a bit, like, instead Instead of like metal, just yeah, Twinkie. Twinkie. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's but, not made out of metal, he's made out of cream for a Twinkie. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um anyway, Jordan, what was one of the jokes that stood out to you from this episode? What are you selling? I'm merely selling the concept of karmic realignment. You can't sell that. Karma can only be partitioned and tapped with the cosmos. <laughs> he's got me there. <laughs> it's just Homer being like offended at yeah. that moment. <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that kind of, yeah, the savant Homer that we kind of learn about, like the one yeah. where he's just suddenly, he yeah. understands concepts very well, but just... In this it, house, we obey the rules of thermodynamics. <laughs> 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 Oh god! Just that was where he takes his stance. Yeah, thermodynamics <laughs> and karmic realignment. <laughs> um, yeah, jokes that stood out to me from this episode. Um, no way, man! No way am I wearing a mask. <laughs> Find yourself another patsy, man. Okay, what about a camera? Oh, that'll do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the camera bit. My god. <laughs> Ten gallon bucket head, <laughs> yeah. and he could barely balance. <laughs> There's a buzzing in there. I believe there might be a bee in your bonnet. Bee. <laughs> that had had one day till retirement. <laughs> oh, a good a retirement playlist. <laughs> yeah, was, and and I love the guy with the like neck at a ninety degree angle. Yeah. He's, He's not, not kidding. <laughs> I was gonna say the. Uh, with the sausages when they fire a poo. He's like, I do not want to live anymore. No, I, <laughs> no, I don't want to live. <laughs> he knows like, what damage this thing can do to you, well, even though his company sells them. We. This is just another one about Homer is a deity because that can kill an ordinary man, yet Homer just is like... Just a little sick. Yeah. Yeah, he can yeah. deal with a couple of hundred grams of expired ham and oh, God. 10, ten pounds, pounds of this, expired shrimp. This shrimp isn't frozen, and it smells funny. Okay, ten pounds. <laughs> oh, and what's the ham one? Ooh, this one's open. Yeah. He I was well, when he starts, like, oh, stomach cramping, throat closing. <laughs> Must finish. Must, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Must finish. <laughs> He eats the whole thing while on the floor. Mm -hmm. Just... Yeah, that was an amazing cut as well. He starts eating it in the store and then smash cut to... He's not even watching anything on TV. He's just <laughs> yeah. eating five slices of ham at a time. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, so gross. Um, so, PT, for better or worse, what story point stood out to you from this episode? I actually think it's it's a very good kind of story that, you know, how he comes into the Simpsons' life because Homer technically did nothing wrong. He, you know, was poisoned by this company, so it's not you have to fix this for Apu. Apu is then you know, trying to make amends to Homer, I, I ruined your life. And then they, they realize, no, he's really sad without this job. So that's why they go to help him. Um, I think the entire storyline is great. Uh, yeah. Not a particular point that really stands out because it's all very solid. I will just quickly mention that quick little joke where they're going to India and you see the trails of the two donkeys and it kind of pans up and it's got the yeah. Lawrence of Arabian music and it's like, yeah. they're only riding donkeys to the airport. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't afford a cab, but <laughs> I spent all my last 10 bucks on the airline tickets. Yeah. It's a good little fake out. I like that joke. Yeah. And they continue the Lawrence of Arabian music, which is a weird choice. Yeah, <laughs> It is. I think as we were discussing in episode, it's a good, it's good exotic music. Obviously, it's not Indian yeah. Yeah. But it is exotic location music. And, yeah, when they're making their way through big, luscious set pieces and things mm. like yeah, that, exactly. it kind of feels apropos. Jordan, what were some of the story moments that stood out to you? You know what? Thinking about it, James Woods' cameo, I think, is one <laughs> of the best cameos on The Simpsons that of I a, can think of. Of a celebrity playing themselves. Yeah, yeah, like, it's so good. Like, he is... 
James Woods nails oh, yeah. it. Like he's so just yeah. on top of the script. He's like, you know, that kind of neurotic antsy. Yeah, even his kind of stutters, they yeah. really, really work. It really and, and like I closed my eyes for a bit and I was like, I'm just imagining Hades talking, <laughs> like, you know, from, from yeah, Hercules. Hercules. Yeah. But yeah, like his whole like little bit part, like it didn't really like it ties in kind of a little bit at the end, but his arc is great and I, I remembered it being in here but I forgot how good it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it actually took up a lot less of the episode than I mm. remember it taking like yeah, it was just him getting hired. One little scene with Jimbo, which was amazing. That, <laughs> yeah. like Jimbo was giving him notes like that. <laughs> yeah. Gotta lose yourself in the moment, man. <laughs> I thought it was labored. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> if I was do this again, uh, you're you and I'm me. <laughs> I'm me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. So good. Uh, and a bit that was cut out of syndication as well is when mm. uh, James Woods was on the phone call and then he's trying to scrape the cheese out of the microwave and then he just starts swearing and they're yeah. bleeping it out. You stupid mother bleep. Yeah, bleep. I was gonna say that was cut from channel 10 syndication definitely <laughs> and it's like it's already censored yeah <laughs> but then they go and the bit the quote after was you know, what oh no sorry i'm talking to my oven yeah <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> although i did love his whole bit there is his all just just tell these these quicker my people I'm a, I'm a ghost i'm a dot i'm out of here i've yeah. thought that to myself whenever i'm leaving so yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm a dot i'm out of here bye <laughs> I do like uh, them sort of making a commentary on Hollywood rewrites and stuff. Yeah. What do you mean my character's not a clerk anymore? He's a jittery Eskimo firefighter. <laughs> yeah. Explain that to How me. How could it be the same movie if it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but all the follow-up, uh-huh. 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 uh-huh, yep. Okay, well, that's pretty good observation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah, tying in again to uh, his great performance in this episode that, like, he did talk himself down then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, similar to Homer's, you didn't tell me this was built on an ancient Indian burial ground. <laughs> yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> Well, that's not my recollection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's Yeah, it's just such a shame that James Woods is a terrible piece of shit now. It's, oh, is he? Oh, uh, He's yeah. like a hard, hard uh, righty. Hard oh, righty. No. Trump loving fucking. And God. he's also uh, had some salacious news come out. Not like Harvey no, Weinstein level ones. of stuff. Okay. but. Okay. I think just general creepiness. I think he was like 40 and dating a 19-year-old or something. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, and I think he ripped on someone else for having a younger yeah. girlfriend, even though he's like literally done the same thing. <sighs> but yeah, he's just he's just mouthing off on Twitter right-wing garbage. For better or worse, story point that I want to mention is uh, when they're actually at India mm. and they're visiting the benevolent high commissioner of the Quickie Mart, yep. this bit is a bit weird. Yeah, yeah a bit, but I kind of like it as a anti-climax, I think. The yeah. fact that it's a convenience store at the top of a windy, bendy hill where you take the usual, like, uh, enlightened shaman kind of guy. Yeah. And he's sitting there, like, on all, like, like kind of the rugs and the cushions. And I, I swear, this is the only time I first noticed this, the sign behind him says, uh, was it? Oh, uh, the great benevolent something knows all except the combination to the safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is a good little um, just convenience like, store throw. Yeah, yeah, like, employee doesn't know no combination yeah. to safe. Yeah, it was pretty cute. Uh, I liked the door chime as well. It was still, like, it went ding as it opened as they as they came in as they, well. Like, all the little 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 mm. notes. Yeah, they really, like, had a great sound effect for the doors, though, that they did sound really big and powerful, but also just, like, yeah. sliding doors. Ooh, that are... <laughs> <laughs> but I think one of you were pointing it out as well. Like, can't they just, like, turn around and walk back in at the end? Why they yeah. only allowed three questions once? Even and... says, thank you, come again. Just leave yeah. and come back. Or... Yeah. Why do three questions between two of them? What are your rules? Yeah. I mean, maybe you have to go back down to the bottom of the mountain and then come back up. Well, it's but better still... than going all the way back to Springfield. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Although I do like when they come back and the kids are just like, oh, Dad, Dad, what did you bring? <laughs> yeah. It went fine. Really? Oh, well, no. Not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not at all. So, yeah, the, I mean, when they're actually in India is uh, probably the weakest part of the episode for me. But yeah. It's also very quick, though. Like, it's, yeah. are we in India yet? Are we in India yet? Are we in India yet? No. Are we in India yet? <laughs> oh. Are we in it? No. <laughs> now we are. <laughs> then they're on the train when one of those, like, you see a lot of photos of the yeah, overly yeah. packed trains and then they're pretty much at the Quickie Mart. Oh, I, I, I like, like, the Christians being, like, the Hare <laughs> Krishnas <laughs> at, yeah. the, at the Indian airport. Oh, great. Christians. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there was some good material. Like, this is, I'm just trying to be objective in another uh, yeah, episode no, that I'm going to spend the rest of this thing glowing over. No, no. So, Absolutely. You know, if you do feel the India, parts in India are offensive, it is very quick. It's a very small part of this episode, so. Yeah. And it's sort of weird that it's like, oh, well, it's just a means to win end, but is it? They just go all the way to India, and what happens is, like, 
Homer screws up. Yeah. Is he really the head of all quickie mode? <laughs> yes. That was great really? that he goes yes. to ask him again after they <laughs> exit. <laughs> you? Yes. <laughs> Play count. How many times before tonight have you seen this episode? Oh, jeez. Um, 1995. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many times have you seen it, Jordan? Uh, a couple of does. That's because I'm Aussie <laughs> as, apparently. Yeah, that's what we call a dozen in <laughs> Australia. Fucking does. You Get got me a, do- a does dories, mate. <laughs> does dozes. Yeah. That'll be forty-two dollars. <laughs> forty-two, geez. Yeah, for twelve for twelve durries. That's oh, there's a Simpsons mashup. How much for your petty durries? Surprisingly <laughs> expensive. <laughs> That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Write that one into rock bottom. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Uh, yeah, I've seen this oh so 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 many times. Mm. Maybe a hundred, I'd say. Mm. Wow. Did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Yeah, one hundred ten. Yeah. Mm. No one's yes. off point. It's got a random musical bit that's still a lot of fun. It's yeah. all the Simpsons are involved in yeah. some way. Yeah. It's got a good little uh, part of helping out friends. And I do really like Homer's line of, hey, it's the least I could do. Well, the least I could do is absolutely nothing, <laughs> but I'll do you one better. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I, th- I feel like Homer's doing good in this episode, just sort of being like a bit of a bumbling fool, just going through this situation mm. You know, not exactly wanting to hurt a poo, but... Yeah, he, he's trying to help him. He's not great at it. And again, it wasn't his fault that he got fired because he got poisoned. Yeah. yeah. I do like how the company goes, you know, but the official company rule is that you're supposed to use a, you know, a sacrificial lamb or scapegoat. <laughs> and if I can acquire one of these animals for you. Yeah. But the fact that, like, they're using him as, yeah, the, as yeah. the scapegoat when, I mean, look, really, it was his story. It was his responsibility. So, yeah. Um, but he was but- also following protocol. Exactly. So I did like the way that it meant that, like the the little story of uh, Marge and Apu and Apu mm. making her life easier, and and like yeah. the, going into the the shopping and and which lane to choose, and uh, like stacking the corn. Like usually we keep our corn and think, well, they'll never move that way. <laughs> yeah, like, corn. I hey, I haven't had that one. I'll delicious corn. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> that is so great. That te- uh, it was, yeah, it was a nice, like, sweet thing where, like, because you could tell Marge was not approving really at first. Like, yeah. kind of, oh, I don't like this, sure what's going on. This yeah. other guy kind of coming in and telling mm. me how to run my household. And then it's like, hey, it's working. Actually, he's got some pretty good tips. Mm. And yeah, the sequence at the Monster Mart, that line about the supermarket, that has stuck with me since I saw that episode. Just a reminder that we love each and every one of you. <laughs> Aww. But yeah, when. He goes, no, go to that line. That one, there's an old man talking the ear off. He's stopped for attention. There's a story behind this, Nickel. <laughs> yeah. I set the toaster to three. <laughs> Medium brown. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, always aim for the line with all the single guys that have got a handful of stuff. Mm. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Only cash, no, no chit chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the wackiness of this episode. Yeah, all the India bits. Uh, I like to keep a lollipop there. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, the hat. The hat bit was very mm. wacky, but the, uh, the ordinary van, like, you know, oh, escape awesome. suspicion. Yeah, by labeling your van ordinary van. It's pretty wacky. Yeah, they had some good uh, incognito van jokes. Flowers mm. by Irene and... <laughs> yeah. Spontaneous musical moment in the middle of it all. Yeah, may yeah. as well bring that up now. Yeah, the Who Needs the Quickie Mart song. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is a great one. Yeah, like it's it's a fun little song, and yeah, I, I really like it. Yeah, so he starts by calling them jerks. <laughs> oh, yeah, <no. laughs> I used to think you were all such jerks. Yeah, but now I've come to love but your quirks. And they how they mix uh, that. Uh, vocal slide in with him sliding down the banister there's just some really good staging in this moment it's not static at all the scene's always moving and he's pointing the cane around to each simpson giving him verse Mm -hmm. that 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 line the uh uh, lisa philosophize bart's adept at spinning lies has like (laughs) stuck in my brain that always like just comes up at the weirdest moments it's culturally very important to me obviously (laughs) Yeah, well, the ones that have stuck with me is just all the rhyming with Quickie Mart. Their floors yeah. are Sticky Mart. They made Dad Sicky Mart. Uh, let's hurl uh, a Bricky, bricky mart. mart. Well, the Quickie Mart is real. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Another great like callback mm. to like mono doll. Like yeah. just everyone's having a big fantastic song and harmonizing spontaneously. And here's Homer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like he doesn't. He didn't know beforehand what he was meant to do, and then he's like realized halfway to fuck. Yeah, despite being the most it. musical of all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and being like the talented one. Mm. Yeah. Oh mm. Or maybe he's uh, dumbing it down. You know, not to raise suspicion. Maybe. Mm, yeah, perhaps. <laughs> but 
they really took advantage of the Simpsons house space in this one and made like simple use of the tools that they had available in the house. Mm -hmm. It's not like sometimes when you see musical moments in a show and then all of a sudden they're on a very garish stage and then yeah. it's yeah. all changed. No, they kept it in the house. I also enjoy the number of times he knocked Grandpa over. <laughs> yeah. Takes his cane for the big number, then takes his chair. And... Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, just as he's about to put weight on yeah, both of those yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. Wow, poor Grandpa. He got he got a lot of shat on. But in I do this like episode. he gets just shoehorned in just for those bits. He says, "Hello, up." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and then they see how the line. Oh, it sounds worse than the album Grandpa made. I really <laughs> want to know what <laughs> album he released. Like S- it's got to be sounds of complaining. <laughs> and just may as well mention it now. The big reason that we covered this episode today is. We are ready to cover all singing, all dancing, the clip show from season nine now. Oh, oh, oh we're Yay. ready. <laughs> I was I was actually listening to this going, oh, wait, this is the bit in the clip show. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, that bit where it's like, everything's done and, like, you know, yep. wiping his hands. I was like, yeah, this must be so Elliot can do the thing. Yeah, so we've <laughs> caught up. We've watched all the episodes that are referenced in that. So look out to that one in the future. And so, yeah, the musical moment ending with uh, Homer going, okay, everything's all wrapped up nicely. Hmm, much quicker than usual. I actually yeah. really like that because, yeah, uh, Apu's paid what he feels is his debts and everything's back to normal, but oh, it isn't. I, uh, I really love that bit because Homer is telegraphing so obviously that like something is about to go yeah. wrong. He's like, yeah. everyone's happy. Every one of us. And he's like doing the <laughs> wiping his hands thing. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and then, then you yeah, hear the it, sobbing yeah. from the roof. And I really like it. It's kind of like a cousin in terms of comedy in the very end when he's like, let's all hug Apu. No. Oh. Mm-hmm. And there's still time. Let's hug him again. <laughs> <laughs> again, this episode had the long intro sequence as well, so I think mm. they were running out of uh, running low on time. But, but it's a really great joke, no matter what. No, it's so. excellent because it also affords them to reuse animation. So, like, it's actually really economical as well. And then Homer's other line uh, after Apu does is "I do," and he goes, "He lied to us through song." I hate when people do that. <laughs> mm, don't we all? Why yeah. does that come into my brain so much? It's not applicable to everyday <laughs> <No>. life. <laughs> I think it's when you find out someone has lied to you, you just go, he lied to me. And then your brain automatically fills in the word hate true it. song. Through uh, the <laughs> Simpsonic synapses. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Simpsonic, Simpsonic synapses. synapses. Yeah. Simpsonic synapses. You will Simpsonic be synapses. spared if you, yeah, if you come to uh, See, BT's w- like fortress hideout it'll that be he built. global man it'll be yeah. the only way to prove you're human is my quotes <laughs> yeah okay let me ask you one question who needs the quickie mark I, I do, do. <laughs> you gotta sing it if you don't sing it you're out <laughs> Just, <laughs> I do shoot him shoot him it's uh, a robot who needs the quickie mark what's a quickie mark <laughs> <laughs> that's how we detect terminators in the future yeah. not yeah. fucking dogs yep <laughs> Twinkinators. Um, <laughs> the heart of this episode. I really like when uh, Apu is all like, I'm going to go down there and demand my job back. And he's all storms in. But as soon as he's through the door, he's like, Oh, my old scum bucket with fly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's just immediately nostalgia and the, the slurpy machine. I, I think it's a really sweet turn and just shows what this place has meant to him. Yeah. yeah. And bad checklist. Homer <laughs> <laughs> J. Fong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, in, in terms of heart, like the kind of weird dedication Apu has Mm. to his job, which is strange. Like, we were saying, yeah, it's not a glamorous job, and it probably does not pay well at all. But yeah, he really loves it, and he really misses it so much it's mm-hmm. strange he even but... misses the searing kiss of hot lead <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't we all i was about to say he almost reminisces it's like oh it's like been so long since like he's he's so high bullet yeah oh, but... i mean i think i'm dying <laughs> <laughs> but they build up the heart as well uh leading up to when he goes to the simpsons house by having him dejected after being fired and then you know, having the howler monkeys laugh at him. Yeah. Special Today laughing only monkeys. laughing monkeys. <laughs> That's right. Babbling Brook is laughing at him. Oh, the babbling Brook. Oh, yeah. that The the bums underneath. Yeah. Who, who needs money when we got feathers? That looks like Barney. That one of the money, guy yeah. with hair. And I was like, is that like, like Barney's brother, maybe? But this know. was just the last thing I expected in that moment. Is Even that babbling brook sounds like mocking laughter. And then it's just two homeless people tickling each other. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> and then, yeah, then coming to the... This is all Homer Simpson's fault. And he's watching that 
comedian. Oh, and what oh, is that comedian yeah. talking about? <laughs> uh, sorry, we've quoted this one a yeah. lot. <laughs> you, you see, you, you, black you, guys you. drive like this. <laughs> Whereas white guys, they all drive like this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like sticking his butt out. It's like, oh, it's true. We look like nerds. One of the best things I've ever seen is a recent meme that had that, and except they had pictures of Obama and Trump and Obama is <laughs> yeah. totally like when leaning he, <laughs> back and looking cool and then Trump is like when he's in that tra- <laughs> tractor yeah yeah it's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. a it's great not- shot of it. it's hilarious <laughs> just yelling at nothing <laughs> a lot of people have taken that with and run with it and fair enough because he does look like an angry toddler behind <laughs> really a does. Tonka truck <laughs> behind one of those things you used to get in the sandpit where you had the two levers and you'd like scoop yeah. the yep. sand and then like fling it over there yeah I miss them. I want a big one of them in my <laughs> next house. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I love that. You could that just bit. get a job as a construction worker. Ah, uh, safe it. <laughs> and responsibility. Have to lift things. Yeah. What if I like kill someone accidentally? Yeah. Small. Yeah. yeah. Like, got bury the, them. Yeah. Yeah. We got that exact <laughs> device to bury them with. <laughs> uh oh. Root, root, root. That's how most people get into the job. <laughs> Couldn't help but notice you're burying someone there. You want a job there, fella? <laughs> Can't I just bury a corpse without someone offering me a job? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, just to round off the heart as well, Apu coming to Homer in, um, you know, contrition and, like, I did you wrong and yeah. uh, determined to helping as well, like... Mm. Like, turning it into a bit of a joke, like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Simpson, you, you know, in my village, this is a symbol of... Um, apology. F- apology, yeah. But bringing that yeah. back later on when he actually is trying to strangle Homer, he's like, yeah. Apu, no, 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 don't apologize. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. I... And he's str- literally strangling me and his eyes are popping out. He's like, ah, I forgive you, yeah. Apu! <laughs> No, see, that bit, that callback actually saves it from being like a pretty weak fake yeah. out as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, it retroactively makes it funnier. Well, it is, it is beautifully shot, though, that, you know, there's the lightning out back and Apu, yeah. Apu's hair is all wet and he's just kind of dead eyed. And, and it's like uh, a POV shot yeah, as well. Yeah. And there's a great act break, I was going to say. Like, mm. we were talking about the act breaks from the previous ones and the kind of, you know, some of them are a bit yeah. weak. This was actually pretty good because yeah. it was like Homer screaming and it was like a bit of tension. And yeah, then I think the cuts. first time we saw, I can't remember it, but I mean, I imagine the first time you saw that was, oh my gosh. Yeah, what is happening here? Definitely. And uh, just talking about POV shots as well, when Homer does have the 10 gallon hat on his head yeah. and he's walking into the Quickie Mart, like yeah. drunken, like unsteady. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And they just show a poo sort of playing it cool. Like mm. he no, like, thinks he knows what's going on here. Yeah. I think he's just noticed a very large, unusual hat. I don't think he's assuming anything. Yeah. This is just between me and you, smashed hat. <laughs> <laughs> but also because he, he makes, like, or Homer makes reference to it, like, just. Do your usual business, like I'm not, not wearing, wearing a hat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, totally. What playlist are we going to put it in? Wait, I, no, wait. I want to change um, that. I would. <laughs> I would also like to change mine to. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, I tried to drink nectar out of Sanjay's head. <laughs> uh, playlist Homer and Apu. I mean, put this with uh, yeah. Apu gets married. Yeah. yeah. Simpsons uh, go to, I guess. Yeah. But it's not the Simpsons. No, it's just Homer. It's Homer. just Homer. Well, it's the second time he's been to India now. Well, I mean, this was the first time. Yeah. The uh, Mangalore yeah. one was the second bang, one. Bang, bang, bang. We yeah. don't recommend anyone watch that no. one. No. <laughs> um, mu- like musical episodes. Yeah, episodes that you have to watch before you cover all show. singing or dancing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we said spicy food before, exotic instruments as well. Oh, cele- and other celebrities playing themselves. Yep. 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 Hadn't been for that stupid first episode, we would have had a uh, thread through these three, mm. but no. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Well, Surfaces. no. No, Billy Boyd was playing himself. Oh, wait, no, he was playing the Hobbit. Like a Hobbit, yeah. Oh. He's Almost. not a hobbit in real life, Elliot. <laughs> a hobbit's not real. He's pretty tiny. Are they real? He's not one of them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You know what? People may be offended by the use of geezers in freezers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially because the nursing home was adequately heated. And that just yeah. turned out to be a, a, a frozen fur storage oh, yeah, warehouse. It was a fur storage warehouse. It's so good. <laughs> now, the story of the cantankerous old geezer. <laughs> I do want to ask is Apu's uniform usually that white? Isn't it kind of green sometimes? No. Uh, I think that's... he wears a green jacket yeah, with I think the that's black what I'm lapel. Of. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's an interesting thing that he's off model in this one because, yeah, uh, that's not his usual uniform. But I guess it was so that they could have the joke of the patches 
uh, you can no longer tell people about our fried pickles. Now <laughs> yeah. hand over your pricing gun. Yeah, which is another concept that probably doesn't exist anymore. The other <laughs> one too. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have pricing guns at your work? Uh, no. No, like I think most places just use barcodes and shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or unless it's kind of for the labels on the you know the shelves or something yeah. like that maybe yeah, i'm sure they exist in some capacity sorry going back to the the uniform I'm just thinking because james woods's one is quite white now that i think about it isn't mm. it it and was so like was the poos. it was but yeah, yeah. But with like uh like blue piping almost on the edge of it i thought yeah that was the other reason i was going to say is that so when james woods was wearing a uniform it looked like he was wearing a uniform mm. i imagine if he was just wearing what a poo usually wears in the quickie mart yeah. it wouldn't have looked like a uniform no yeah it might have been a production thing yeah it makes sense yeah, yeah, very Homer's Watch sort of thing. Yeah. BT, any other notes? <laughs> he refers to the Quickie Mart as the site of my spiritual deep dancing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's that and Kai McGrill. I'm, where I, don't, I totally did not pick these up as a kid. No. Mm. Uh, but that does it for me for notes. I am out. Jordan, any other notes? Yeah. It's just one crushing defeat after another until your wish Flanders was dead. <laughs> um, yeah, that's definitely a line I've referred to yeah. <laughs> multiple times throughout life. Mm -hmm. It's a good bumper sticker, actually. One thing I did notice about that, like, it's probably in every single episode uh, that shows the Quickie mm -hmm. Mart, but I hadn't noticed before, just to show, like, how stingy and awful a corporation they are. There's a sign oh, un yeah. underneath the counter that says, no checks, credit cards, or food stamps. Oh. Wow. <laughs> You're like, Jesus, come on. These people just... Anyway, the other thing I had was... It's not even worthy of being in Anal Corner, but Apu... Not worthy of being in Anal Corner! <laughs> not quite. Uh, Apu stacks the corn. Mm. Marge goes, oh, we need more whatever. We come to the quick mart with me, and he like knocks over the cans, and he knocks over way more cans than what he had stacked up onto the counter. But yeah, it's not a really big deal. Can we talk about the Monster Mart a minute, though? Yes. <laughs> the, <laughs> How do we go this long without it? So many amazing sequences. I don't know where to start. That's a good price for uh, 12 pounds of nutmeg. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, is this parodying Costco? Were they around that long? Uh, maybe. Something if not, like it. I if know. not, Walmart, maybe? Yeah, actually. I just, think Walmart changed a little bit to be more like a grocer than a... But maybe I think they started out as I, a big box. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I've definitely been to stores like that when I was in America when I was younger. Mm. And I was just, yeah, just massive, you know, 40-pack of batteries and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm. I cannot remember if it was a Walmart or a Costco or what it was. But yeah, I remember being about 12... Sitting in an office chair because I sold those and just scooting myself around these massive <laughs> aisles. And one person go, uh, sir, if you wanted to buy 12 of those today, there's a price break. <laughs> no, I'm good with one, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, what a, uh, the quick aisle is a thousand items or less. <laughs> yeah. And Bunny thinking that yeah. giant person-sized maple syrup <laughs> and that he's killed her. <laughs> and says, it's happened again. <laughs> yeah. He's buying nothing but beer and Pepto-Bismol. Yeah. <laughs> Pep Peptic bismol no. They didn't want to get sued. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, God. And yeah, a bit of a surreal, wacky moment in this episode where yeah, the, it, then that causes the cranberry stack to get knocked over <laughs> yeah. in a giant wave. That was actually pretty wacky. We forgot that in wackiness. Yeah. Uh, mm, it's it's cran delicious. Yeah. Crantastic. Crantastic. Thank you. <laughs> we were wrong together. Yay. <laughs> so that's what made me suspicious of your harmonizing before. Yay. <laughs> you guys are on a similar wavelength. Yeah, I had one idea. Why wasn't it Snake at the end, I wonder? I thought that was actually a good choice because it did allow for that character to sort of be his own thing and be stupid when he goes, your next single will be number three with a bullet. I'm not a singer. Shut up. <laughs> and I don't think it mattered that it wasn't. Didn't no, know that it wasn't. I was just kind of curious that it wasn't. I suppose. Yeah, because you wondering... have to design an entirely new character. Maybe the voice actor wasn't available. Who knows? Oh, no. Bet Midler. <laughs> There's a conflict in my schedule. <laughs> That's a pretty good snake. <laughs> Who is Snake? Is it is it uh, Hank Azaria? No. Pretty sure it's Julie Kavner. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> she does Marge, Patty Selma, Mrs. Bouvier, and Snake, aka Jailbird. 
<laughs> so we were talking about a brain damage joke before, yeah. mm. and they had one in this episode, but I liked this one. Oh, these vegetables are clearing the cholesterol out of the old heart. And then <laughs> yeah. they go to the like the diagram of Homer's yep. body as the cholesterol just drops on his brain. <laughs> I love as well like the Ooh, short circuit yeah. the short circuit sounds that are yeah. coming. Like, you, you can see like these like static like bolts of electricity in his brain. Yeah. That's a little bit different because compared to the lead licking one where it's implied that he's been licking lead every day for the past however long. Yeah. And that's making him stupid. This one it's making him stupid because the, the cholesterol literally just moved from his heart to his brain yeah. then. Yeah. So obviously he's able to talk just fine and then he's uh, having trouble speaking. Mm. Take that, stupid version of the same joke. We showed you. All right, time for my quick fire notes. I will mention that James Wood's joke that closed out his appearance in this episode, uh, I didn't like it, but I think that's just because I'm getting sick of The Simpsons doing a, yeah, that's the situation sort of jokes yeah. where yeah. it was like now i'm off to battle aliens on a faraway planet yeah sounds like a good movie yeah um, movie let's yeah. say that although being that this they had was... established it to be fair when he's like oh yeah i go full uh method acting i research my roles <laughs> yeah. even traveled back in time but you know what i've said too much <laughs> <laughs> so i will give it a pass for having set that up already yeah, yeah chaplin i had a little cameo on that yeah it was good and i think being that this was season five Maybe this is one of the first times they've done that joke, mm. too. I'm willing to give it that uh, yeah. benefit, but, you know, for the moment... Uh, yeah, it, it sticks out to you now, so, yeah. Because they've done it so many times, and now it's like, hey. Okay, so, quick fires. <sighs> Again, with milking a lot of money out of static shots and reusing animation... They've got a bit of mileage out of the, the ambulance bit as well. <laughs> oh, that was yeah. funny, though. I, li- I like that it yeah, just happens repeatedly. <laughs> and that they were able to use it as a smash cut after the, okay, 10 pounds. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was good. And we were talking about when Apu goes to eat the hot dog. Uh, my note that I wrote down to remind me of that bit was wiener side. <laughs> 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 that's uh that's like when you wear really tight pants and yep. you got it like which side do you tuck on <laughs> is the wiener side <laughs> and now i'm thinking of system of a down welcome to, to the wiener side <laughs> no, nobody no. here but balls yeah um <laughs> no, they're on the they're definitely you, if you've got the wiener on one side the balls have to go on the other side yeah can't fit both you can't have a ball either side you know running Straddling, and straddling that, the ham. And that's why emos can't have children. You call that the cut lunch. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's not my joke. No. Um, so when and then you have the meat and potatoes. That's when you split them. When Apu's doing his apology choke hand thing, and it's like, now that you mention it, this is kind of threatening. Many people have died needlessly. <laughs> yeah. That was a good joke. Uh, uh, again, Homer's line of if he starts doing Lisa's wood chopping, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's dumb. But Homer going, oh, I'm trying different things tonight. I'm using a, poo, what do you call this thing? Again? A napkin. <laughs> Outrageous! <laughs> it's so silly, but it sticks with me. Yeah. Especially his, his response saves it. <laughs> Outrageous! Yeah. yeah. And you know, I'll um, never forget the time you, me, and Danny were at a Mexican restaurant, and I gave us napkins. You were like. Oh, someone usually puts this on my lap for me. <laughs> <laughs> was it even like was it a cloth napkin or was it just a no. paper napkin? <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> they were like half ply, you know, restaurant yeah. napkins. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like sitting there, um, and, like motioning down to your lap with your face. Yeah, like, it was. Hilarious. Are you gonna like do your fucking job or what? My <laughs> lap is bare. <laughs> Uh, I love the moment when uh, Barney is applying for the job at the Quickie Mart and he just goes, I need a job that'll keep me out of the sun. <laughs> well, he's head and shoulders above everybody else. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, I like the little joke about Homer saying, yeah, I'll go to Windia. And Lisa's being like, Dad, that's over 10,000 miles away. I'm aware of that, Lisa. It's over 16,000 kilometers. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like yeah. a good joke about the God's, metric system. God's work in the metric system. <laughs> yep. Let's rank this thing. BT, kick it off. Oh, man. This one I'm really not sure. Um, mm. I'm definitely in a gold cubic area, yeah. but where do I land? If I do go gold, it's one of those ones that I don't have complaints about. It just doesn't quite kick into that. And I'm just... Uh, ooh, do I count this as essential? 
All right, Guts, help me out here. What are you thinking? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? You always know. Shut up. Would you like to pass for the moment? No, I hate passing. Okay. It makes you feel like I'm relying on others, and I don't like doing that. I'm going to give you some, like, you got some tough love, so, you no, know. No, okay. they hate that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let you me tra- better start talking, guts. Let, let me try saying both rankings out loud and see if either one feels more true. <clears throat> I give this one a gold. <laughs> I give this one a cubic zirconia. <laughs> the fanfare was much better, that's for sure. Yep. <laughs> I honestly thought I was going to go gold, but having said them out loud, it feels like cubic might be the truer of the two answers. <laughs> I feel like I influenced that. I am. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm still very split. I'm going to put it on a cubic I may retract. All right, Jordan? I'm really quite stuck as well. I know. This is a really great episode. I really like it a lot. Very quotable. Question is whether it's essential. I don't know. Uh, you know what? I, I think I might have to go gold. Like, it's right on the cusp for me. I, th- I think this might be the hardest split I've yeah. ever had. I really mm. feel no w- w- full push one direction or the other. So I, I think it's mainly just because it's like, it, while it is a f- a f- an absolutely fantastic episode, it, it kind of doesn't have really any bearing on any of the kind of the Simpsons universe. It's not something that would be like your first port of call for someone to be like, go watch this one, as opposed to like when you guys were talking about the Barbershop Quartet one or, you know, like the Monorail one or, or whatever. Like, you know, those are those are essential viewing. Yeah. Uh, this one is is great. Absolutely. You, you watch it. But I, I yeah, I just I, I don't think I can push it over the line to Cubic. Yeah, look, between excellent and essential, it's assen- it's essentially a gut feeling. And I'm falling on the gold side of it as well, like, only just. Mm. Uh, I think there's just enough sort of dip moments in this episode for me to bump it down, even though there's some amazing quintessential, you know, iconic, yeah. quotable moments. Yeah. I, I personally don't have cubic in me. Uh, that's fair. And that's sort of, yeah, where I'm falling on that one. Hey, this gives it, what, an overall uh, shiny gold. That's yep. where it belongs in that kind of area. Mm. So, yeah, I think that's I think that's where it belongs. Absolutely. What are the, what are the other shiny golds, yeah. Elliot? This will average out into a shiny gold, and this is actually our least populated category at wow. the moment. The only other episodes in this category are Two Cars in Every Garage and Three Eyes on Every Fish. Yep. That's the mm-hmm. Mr. Burns running for local government. Yep. Coincidentally, the two Mrs. Nahasa Pima Petalons, hey, where nice. Apu and Manjula get married. And if yep. memory serves, everyone else got to that, and I keep it. <laughs> uh, Sunday, Cruddy Sunday, the one where Homer puts together a football, going to watch the football thing yeah. with Wally Kogan. Played you by and Fred I golded Phil Cubic. Yeah, I think that's because of his love of football, even though there wasn't any football in it. <laughs> <laughs> or singing with Dolly Parton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and EIEI Annoyed Grunt, the Tamako episode. Ah, okay. Yeah. What season is that? 12. Okay, right. It yeah. Right on the cusp. I cubic you and Shag were like, come on, man, it's really <laughs> funny. And I'm like, no, I'm drunk right now. I'm cubicing it. <laughs> I love <laughs> drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Shiny Gold's a good spot for yeah. Homer <clears throat> and Apu. Guys, that has been The Simpsons Index, episode 63. Wow. Smashing. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Owen Wilson. Wow, thanks for having me. <laughs> no, I, I lost it at the end there. <laughs> Sorry. All good. No, thank you, Jordan. Hey, no, you, 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 the, you're the man here. You're the real hero. Oh, shucks. And thank you, BT. You people out there, you're the stars. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been your host, Elliot J. O'Neill. That's all the must in the house. <laughs> Thank you for checking out the Simpsons Index podcast. Don't forget to go to www.thesimpsonsindex.com for the spreadsheet and information about upcoming episodes. And for today's extra content... Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, everyone, do the Mario. Ugh, I'm burping pesto and it's delicious. Oh, makes me hungry for pesto. Oh, what do you eat when you want only the besto? Pesto. Get ready for sipping sounds, people. <sighs> this podcast is brought to you by Nescafe. I think we were just going to say, this podcast is brought to you by sipping. <laughs> Oh, I always, I'd love to find, remember it was like a, oh, it was an instant coffee and it was a mm-hmm. series of ads that mm-hmm. told a story mm-hmm. and it was like these two people like falling in love mm-hmm. and they had this like, w- like 
quiet like wooden flute music over the top I'm of it. I'm pretty sure that was Nescafe. Yeah, I think it oh, was. Oh, and then they, they, they go on a car chase throughout the streets and they splash a guy with lunch and he goes, ah, my lunch. No, they were never that exciting. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, it was like out in the country. He came over for coffee and I didn't know how we'd be. We had to be there because we had to have Christmas together. But how would we handle our emotions? But over coffee, I realized that the past was in the past. Yeah, but it was like two pe- the two people like talking mm. and it was like this will they, won't they get together kind mm. of like people were hanging out for the end, like what would happen in the next Nescafe ad. That's what we did for entertainment back then. Mm. Nescafe. And the one I was referring to was the Yogo commercial. Oh. Uh, yeah. Because then they oh. also smashed the dude's car. Barry, Barry, listen to me. I'm going to have to call you Barry. Barry. <laughs> so, Sven, what are we testing today? <laughs> Airbags. Marvelous. <laughs> Still got it. If you didn't watch Australian ads in the in the nineties, you were missing out on entertainment. You had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Or if you just weren't watching Spellbinder. <laughs> Shit was good. Or Chicken amazing. chippies. They're delicious. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> but to bring it back to the Simpsons, Marge, the reins are here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, uh, I felt bad for that guy. He's been fooled by corn. Yep. <laughs> he thinks, ah, oh, the reins are here. We won't starve. We'll have money for our children. Oh, it was fucking corn. <laughs> and uh, now they've eaten the last of our corn. <laughs> <laughs> you bastards, I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, McCain, you've done it again! <laughs> you fuckers! <laughs> McCain! McCain! <laughs> Ding! You've done it again. <laughs> Have you seen the Skyrim porn parody, Guyrim? Anyway. Um, <laughs> I have seen World of Warcraft. Or of Warcraft? No, World, World of Warcraft? World of Warcraft, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something to do with whores. Yeah. <laughs> com. Um. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. But, 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 cock, 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 cock. <laughs> but, dot, com, just in case you aren't getting enough porn elsewhere. <laughs> All right, how do I passionately hate something I'm not too fussed about? I am so nonplussed about this. Ah. <laughs> Wait, doesn't nonplussed mean actually genuinely confused? I mean, I thought it was like, yeah, whatevs, but. I thought it's become to mean that, like people have meant it like nonplussed meaning yeah. like, oh, I don't give a shit, but I think it actually meant that they were. Has no plus. I thought it just meant subtraction. So surprised and confused that one is unsure how to react. Yeah, there we go. Bewildered, basically. But because it like starts with non. You ever just be plussed? Not disconcerted, yeah, unperturbed. Yeah, that's. I think that's the generic meaning now that, because that's that's we, the North American informal. Yeah, because that's because people don't. That's what it just sounds like it should mean. So. Yeah, yeah. Like how literally means figuratively now. True. I mean, to be fair. If you were like uh, that, if you were that word, if you were befuddled, bewildered, amazed, you wouldn't be like, I am so nonplussed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a word you want to express that feeling. Or for just the the polar opposite. I'm plussed. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want to be like, I'm nonplussed. I feel normal yeah. about this. There are no pluses to me. You know, whatever high school is do. I don't know, ask me. I didn't have a life in high school either. Smoking stones behind the kitchen cafeteria. That's how that worked. <laughs> I saw a guy do a, 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 a bong needle once. Holy shit. That's inaccurate. If you do one pot needle, you immediately die. <laughs> yeah. Main school kids. Mm-hmm. Just not around the back of the utility shed. So, uh, coming from Apu's little idol. Um, I'm going to do that a lot in this episode. <laughs> I can't hit that note at all. My voice is so low. I do. There That's we good. go. Um, sorry. Further looking. Uh, you're not gonna... <laughs> Almost there. Tough being a town crier. Yeah. Need a bell. Someone get me a bell. You there, boy. What day is this? The day to get me a bell. Um, And that's all my notes. Are you guys out? Oh, I'm out. All right. So far out, man. Whoa. Gnarly. You can see through time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's rank this thing. Mm-hmm. I want to take that again. That was really weird. I mean, let's should. rank it. Let's rank this thing, dear. Are you feeling okay? <laughs> take four. I thought you were going to do like a like a chant. You would try it the first time. You'd be like, let's rank this thing. <laughs>